It's like right in the middle of mainland Mexico. <laughs> okay, so we're we're here in Mazatlan right now. Let me switch this over here. Oh, it must be in this section of the map in Navigraph where everything gets a little bit weird when I zoom in yeah, and I've probably. lost track. Because I saw San Mateo and I was trying to see where that airport was. There's okay. There's Max. Where where are you pointing? I saw that you were pointing over here. So it's basically like east southeast from Guadalajara. Had it. Where did? Okay, Max is pointing. There it is, Mexico City. Got it. Okay, I got it. I got it. So, so we have the option of either. Oh, it's almost like. It's oh, almost... we could. Oh, we could cut over to Mexico City from Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. And then follow east. That will put us like basically down across Yucatan and then down Costa Rica and stuff. Because I think coming back up, let me see if there's airports over here to island. Yeah, Shardies. I, di I didn't notice these gray lines earlier, and I saw one just now that re made me realize that's how you fi you figure out where it's pointing to when they're that clustered. Um, oh, yeah. Let's. Okay. So here's my thought. So, and by all means, like. So we're here. If we go across Mexico like this, like across Mexico, Yucatan here, and then down Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Panama into Colombia. And then we're gonna go down essentially the coast here and up through Brazil. And when we come back up, if we go along the edge of Venezuela, right in here is French Guiana, like right in here, I think it's right. French. Um, Where we would hit Kuru. Yeah, cause I, this is where the launch is right here. It's in here somewhere where the Ario, the ESA yeah. launch facility is at. And then yeah. follow the island chain up and go like Trinidad, St. Lucia, um, Guadalupe, Kits, Puerto Rico, Dominican, Cuba, and then up Florida. And cause that way- Okay, we can, so like, let, me adjust, let me adjust this flight plan to go over Mexico City and out to Veracruz. And I think Mexico City from Mazatlan is about 400 miles, 400 or 500. Yeah, that should shorten it a little bit there to Mexico City. Mm. But I'm gonna plan out. I'm gonna plan all the way out to Veracruz, I think. Okay. Okay, so Veracruz. So you're doing. What I need to do MMVR. is I need because I like I just downloaded this like right before. So we're gonna high end. New right. input. I don't want this anymore. <laughs> hey, everybody want to hate me? Do y'all want to hate me for a minute? You're going to go to day mode, aren't you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you want know just that stop centering me back down at by Africa. Okay, now, how did I have this going? Okay, that was here. Pick. So you said you're doing... Um... It'll be uh, MMMZ to MMVR. MMVR? Yeah. Guadalajara. Oh, I guess I could do that. that is the destination and not the alternate. Yes. Okay, now can I find Mexico City? I don't want an alternate. We'll do that. Oh, it's still totally reading me in the wrong spot. Yeah, I turned that off so it would stop doing that. And then you. Mex this okay, is there's GPS. Mexico City. Let's... To get to Mexico City, follow Victor 5. Alright, I'm just gonna do. How do I change uh... this? How do you change what? So it's not doing GPS. Oh, for the oh, auto there route? We go. You... Yeah, I switched it to high. You're. Okay. Well, high altitude is going to be nothing but GPS. No, it's got it following the. Well, it's going to pass over them, but it's. Yeah, yours is doing that weird dog leg thing that I hate. See, this is why I do it by hand. Yeah. And I'm just going to do VOR to view. I'm just going to do VOR. I'm not even going to bother with the intersections in between. 
That's why I just look at the airways and I just plot the points. It should be Toluca. See, I wish there was a way I could like grab this line and be like, yo dog. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, 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 we're going to pass at least over Mexico City, but that may be the end point. We'll see. Add. Are you you're doing over Guadalajara, right? Correct. It'll be um, what I've got right now is. Uh, Victor three, Victor three, Victor five to Guadalajara and then Victor five to Toluca and then it looks like it's going to be Victor 28 to Veracruz does that weird dog leg over there and for anybody wondering, this is what I was looking at here, is this block in the between. So when I tell him Victor 28, or here, I'll start at the start, because I told him from the start. So when I told him Victor 5, basically all he has to do is find that from Mazatlan and just follow it yeah. until the next point that I said. And I said Guadalajara for, or no, I said Victor 5 out to Toluca right here. Because it goes, that whole Victor 5 block goes all the way to here and continues. But this is where I chose to exit. So I gave him the entrance and the exit point. So it'll be Toluca to, uh, well, you'll find it. it'll be Rex's. There's a fix that it exits on for Victor 28 to turn to uh, Veracruz. I, I just put in the VOR doing. points. Because yeah. we can't put uh, airways into these systems, even though I think you're supposed to be able to. You can put waypoints. Yeah, yeah. But, like, on I know on A320 you're supposed to be able to. Uh, on these, I believe you are as well. Uh, you're supposed to be able to put in um, the entry point mm -hmm. and the exit point and select the airway. There's supposed to be a way to select the airway and the system is supposed to automatically populate the, um, it won't populate your flight plan, so it's not cluttered with all the fixes. It will show it on the screen, though, on your map. But I don't think it will actually do that. Oh, and here, let me um, need to export this. I need to provide a link for this. I haven't provided a link for this yet. I actually have all of these flight plans available for people. Yeah, I, like I said, I need to figure out I just haven't uh, created a link for that yet, I don't think. Because that was supposed to go into the VOD and highlight description that Twitch doesn't use. Nope, that... Can't wait till that bug is fixed. Uh, and I'm going to take ramp 10 at Mazatlan. And this was a full stop. This wasn't an audible, right? So we were refueling here? Yeah, we're refueling. This is a full stop. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mastermind. Wow. But. <laughs> Where is the... There we go. Oh, and you're going to want to adjust the time and everything before you... Yeah. Since we're hopping around the world here. Where is Mexico City? Oh, so you know what? I should have stayed on the menu. Hey, tomorrow night. Five, right? If we're doing flight planning tomorrow night, somebody remind me to show you that you can actually build these flight plans in Flight Simulator. Yeah. I keep forgetting to show that you can actually do that. Mm. 
you figured it out with the filter. You you figured out the filters to show all the uh, the fixes and the navigates and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep meaning to show that, and I I keep forgetting. Oh, or the search bar. Yeah, 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 the search bar too. But if you go to filters, you can actually turn on all those fixes and get all the triangles. Would you say after um, PTJ, which was uh, three eight, or sorry two eight, did you go three four? No, it should be two eight up to uh, the Rex's fix. You should just follow two eight all the way to Veracruz, from Mexico City to, uh, or from the Mexico City VOR, follow Victor twenty eight. And it should lead you to Veracruz. Uh, if you're still in high end route, you're going to need to switch to low to see it's that. It's in low end route. Okay. And it should take a right hand turn. It should take a dog leg at Rex's. It's 8 hand. I don't see where. Have you not plotted up to Mexico City yet? I thought I did. It's kind of buried uh, yeah. to the... Uh, I totally lost. Oh, Mexico City, right there. Yeah. I kept losing it. Essentially that. Okay. That should basically be it. <laughs> I don't really know why I did this. Because I'm going to try to plot this into... Uh, into... Oh, the fight, fight sim. Why you do this to me? It don't like you. Are there really two? Two what? Uh, it's telling me there's two... Waypoints named TNY. One of them is 127 miles, and one of them is 131. 131. <clears throat> it's the 131. Okay. What plane do I usually fly? All right, the G58. So the departure airport is MMMZ. Um. Mazalan, what parking did you set on? 10. 10. Oh, the 12. And then Destiny. That was weird. I must have misclicked. Is. M M L D M. Veracruz. High condition. Uh. Let's do. Okay. Having. Having issues entering my flight plan here. Why did that do that? That was weird. Oh, this did. You can do VR to VOR and it goes direct to uh, MZT. You know what? I'm backing out to the main menu, or not, or to the map menu to load my flight plan because this is not giving me the warm and fuzzies. Actually, wait, can I load it from here? Will you let me load it from here? Yep. Probably not. No, right. This only lets you load flights from here. Yeah, I'm going to the menu to uh, load that plan because that's for some reason I'm having issues loading it.
I'm going to assume you are going to be nice and you are going to correctly load this into the system. Help! I knew you were going to do that. I knew it. I knew it, you stupid, stupid piece of software. <laughs> what did you do? I want to see if this it loaded works. a departure, even though my flight plan doesn't have a departure. And yeah. then as soon as I cleared the departure, it just went, no, your flight plan is junk. I'm going to auto generate some kind of random nonsense that makes no sense hmm. whatsoever. Well, that just doesn't, that just shouldn't do that. No, it shouldn't. All right. So what I'm going to do, let's see if it'll let me load these. Listen, mine follows airways, all right? Oh, airways are not allowed. And it, and it hits the cities that we're looking for. Airways are not so allowed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it load this in, into the system and see if it loads it properly. I don't think it's going to load it properly. Oh, the autogen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that was. I don't know what happened when I cleared that. That was a whole lot of intersection spam. I mean, if I can't load this in, I'll just have to write down frequencies and just do uh, radio nav, I guess, instead of GPS. Oops. Dude, I said clear. TY, Stay out of the way. GDL, MLM, TLC, MEX, APN, REXs. Oh, wow, it actually loaded the points. Okay. In that case, all I should have to do is go to procedures, departure, remove the departure, remove the arrival. Now I should have my flight plan as I planned it. Si, sí, senor. Okay, the next thing I want to do is we have a potential of stopping at Mexico City. Oh, I can do this in route. I can do this when we're in the air. Let's see, PFD. I'm gonna say with an outside air temperature of 32 Celsius, probably don't need a peanut heat. A wee bit toasty. Let's see. Yeah, but that heat does more than just keep ice from forming. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think I'm good for engine start. Oh, you're over there chopping up nerds. Did I chop one up? Nope, they're, nope. they're standing around. I took okay. care of them for you. <laughs> I gave them the clear call as well, and they're like, I'm going to walk into your propeller. Fine. Fine. Have well, nerd goo everywhere. I mean, so you, have, you technically have marshalers there. You're supposed to listen to them for engine starts. Well... They should have listened to me. <laughs> Can you load that? It's GDL. You got it. Wait. You... Hey, you actually did it. Yay. Uh. You're doing your flight plan in there? Yeah. All right, I'm going to stand up really quick and take a break, grab something to drink. I will be back.
It just takes it a second to add it. No, I don't want to put it. Go down. Thank you. Now adjust. TTJ. So hit enter. Yeah, it takes it a minute there. Let's see, GDL, TNY, GDL, MLM, PTJ to MEX. Totally ignoring you, chat. I'll get with you in just a second. I'm just trying to enter this in. Hit enter, give it like 30 seconds. There you go. It's like it's recalculating everything, which I guess it makes sense. MEX, and after MEX is Rex's, E X E S. to MMBR. Yay! Yay! That's what we wanted. Yay! And then I have the option, and I will leave this up to you. I have the option of doing this and having the chart on. Or not. On, off, on, off, on, off. Either way. <laughs> is that, is that, is there? Uh, yeah, the only reason why not is blocking um, screen real estate. I can do that. And I can do that. And I don't know if... Dude, get out of the way. You should be able to see the pink icon. I wonder if I zoom in here. Yeah, here you go. You can zoom in there. Will it zoom in? Did it actually zoom in? Did it do it and I didn't notice? It did do it and it did it super quick. So I didn't see the delay, because it's real time when I look at the preview. Because I'm a pro. Do that. I will put flat tracking on. And now you can see the destination up here. And we good. Dude, I am so not even close to a pro streamer. Pro streamer. Not this dude. <laughs> pro streamer is for other places. <laughs> hey now. Now, hey, hey, now. Who I have whiskey? <laughs> yeah, I probably will be. Fl okay, it's a good point. I will probably do most of this externally, which is why I did it in the top right corner. Because, like, you know, there's not much. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking of. It's like, internal, it's a little weird. Though, usually internal, I, I guess I do set this. But external, it's like that. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. I'm going to sneeze again. 
Okay, have fun. I probably not super fun. I was like 99% sure that since I muted it, I wasn't going to sneeze, but then I ended up sneezing. So it wasn't wasted. <laughs> <me. laughs> I, I actually sneeze in threes. I just got the mute off on the last of the first one of the second and the stuff and the things. All right. Are you all good? Yeah. We're crosswind again. Oh, I'm not surprised. No, wait, are we? No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, uh, runway's gonna be zero eight. Fuel. Oh yeah, fuel first. The fuel box around here. Good idea. I don't know. Let me see if it's on the chart. Not on the chart. Well, the fuel box is totally an FSC thing. FSC. Uh, how about it is a flight sim thing? Where is the fuel box? Oh, it's uh, it's, it's yeah, behind me it. over by mastermind. Yeah, it's basically on the way Fake. to the Mastermind. There's also a fuel truck yeah. right there. And... Do you get the dialogue if you park by the truck? I don't know. Wait, where's the truck? Oh, I don't have the truck. Okay, so that truck's not real. Okay, well... And it usually means that you can call for ground services, though. But yeah, it's over on basically the other end of this yeah, building. Yeah, I Okay. I saw it. And yes, technically, we should shut off before we fuel. Blah. Eh, hot pits. I mean, these these ramp nerds are having a... My parking brake's still on. No, it's off. Okay. No, I just have initial separator on, so I have no power. Engine's being starved. Um, I mean, these ramp nerds are being trained to duck our props and wings, so why can't they hot refuel? It's fine. Uh, sex to be dude. There, I hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. You know, you would think as somebody with what over are you two doing, <laughs> as somebody with over like three thousand launches you... and recoveries, Listen. I would be somebody who would be a little more sympathetic to these guys. But <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure this is a gal. But um, I have questions. This, this view right here, this is a very demeaning stance, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not any better. La lady, lady. Uh, there are people watching is she, here. Is she clipped into the concrete or is she like standing she's on, clipped, the ground, clipped she's standing the on the ground? She's clipped into the toe <laughs> card. Um, um, Awkward. I'm just going to taxi this way. Gonna not take a look at that. Shh. Can, can somebody come move this van out of the fueling spot, please? I need to park right there. Let's get out of here. Man, Mastermind's got a fuel truck parked over there by them. I ah, keep now I got fuel. Forgetting, uh, I don't use the pedals enough. I keep forgetting that you need to push the foot forward for the direction you want to turn. I don't know why that, like... I struggle with that. Because you're not used to it? Yeah, uh, that's... Okay. I guess I do know why I struggle with that. I mean, that's just a guess, but... You have a parking brake on to get the fuel dialogue. Here, should we do yes. it real time? Oh god, do they have Air Force fuel pumps? Because you're going to be waiting there oh. for hours. Air Force fuel pumps? Okay. You're going to be there for hours. Oh, are we traffic? Put have live traffic on. Okay. I haven't seen a lot of it, though. You said runway... 3-0? Uh, it should be zero eight. Oh, oh, I thought it said three zero. I have. Uh, okay. 
Because because every runway is three zero to you right now. Apparently. <laughs> oh wait. Yeah. Wait, am I reading this wrong? Am I reading the wind wrong here? Zero eight. Hold on, uh, I'm it's cheating. One, it's one knot. Like, does it really matter? I mean, if we're doing things the proper way, then yeah. That should be the windsock, right? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's directly crosswind. I'm gonna take zero eight. I thought that was crosswind. Where do I see the airport chart? Uh, on the top. Oh, it's probably when this is you... taxi, huh? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Right. This is a backtrack. Yes. Okay. More power! <laughs> Runway incursion hotspot. Oh, this doesn't have me at the right spot. I'm over there, Sim. Oh, is your Sim connect not updating properly? Uh, it, it, it just doesn't have me at the exact... I wonder if it's because of the refuel. I haven't moved out of the fueling box yet. Maybe. Which is entirely a sim thing. But it looks like it's got me facing in the right heading. Oh, no. This is going to be a downwind takeoff. I, w I was reading it backwards. That's fine. It's fine. Bus? Actually, now that makes me kind of curious if I'm going to have bus. a... Bus. 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 Eon rap bus. Eon rap bus. Bus. Eon rap bus. 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 <laughs> You asshole! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Are you seeing this? <laughs> it's like a shark circling. We need we need Eon Rat Bus, and we need a Sherna's Lurk Shark fin emote. I need that combo. Anybody who has that combo gets internet points. I mean, I have that combo. Then you get internet points. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Bill, look at that. Uncle Bill with the mad props. That shark fin is one of my favorite emotes in all of Twitch. Can't wait to get my flight stick and throttle. Any word on that? Is it still like end of October? Still October 24th was the last email. Oh my god, loud noises! <laughs> I knew that one was coming. Uh, uh, what did you do? Cool. I I lost the ability to uh, click on things. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. What? Uh, I don't remember. Chat. Who had the that. fix for that? Somebody had a fix for that last stream. Uh, I thought I went to the menu and came back in. I don't want to do that. I know. Shuffle ATC window. Oh. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Do do what that thing is. No. Didn't work. Hang uh, on. Let me. No, oh god, like, what did I... Oh, I hit the pause. I didn't mean to hit the pause. Do you escape? Go to the menu, but, like, don't exit? And then come back in. Oh, I can't even resize that window. Hang on, I can tear it out, though. Hang on, let me do this. Let me... Escape. I have the ability to click on those things. Okay, okay, just make sure. Okay. Now, can I click? You know, I could totally follow nope. the taxi line. No worky. Cool. Get some hand flying. 500 miles. <laughs> Fun with that.
I really need to like get figure out what the correct taxi speed is for everything. Twenty five. Aha! You the camera it? one fixed it. That means the camera one broke it, because I popped that one open uh. to get into drone view. I should probably slow down so y'all can catch up with me, too. I mean, that's up to you. Hey, hey what are we cruising yeah. at? Uh, crap, I forgot to... What is the eastbound altitude for VFR? Is it the thousand? Odd plus, it, odd plus five. It's odd plus five. Yeah, but that's the United States. I don't know what Mexico I don't really is. Care. Um, I should, at some point, like, see what safe altitude is for our flight. Uh, I thought I looked. Thought I saw... I saw 12... One in the Mex sector with Guadalajara. Uh, Guadalajara is pretty high up. I mean, the airport is six thousand. Uh, yeah. Geez, I don't know, like it's D thirteen. It's D thirteen five. Thirteen five. All right, I'm gonna step up to ten. I noticed that the way that I've been climbing this aircraft recently, the pressurization doesn't work that fast. I've noticed a lot of the aircraft, like at ten, you need to adjust mixture or condition or things like that. Not oh, this is just a pressurization thing, and it'll it'll yell if I don't tend to it properly. Five. So I'm just gonna step it. I'm gonna sit at ten while pressurization settles. Ah. You know, someday I'll learn to keep my mouse on the knobs that I'm trying to spin. I'll slow down once I get to 10. I don't want to pull the throttle back that far when I'm climbing. <laughs> Actually, I kind of need more throttle. <laughs> there's two masterminds also. Or this is going to take... Yeah, mas okay, so I'm the slow one. Got it. So I'm going to climb... Yeah, you're currently the slow one. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. climb direct to 13.5. Bing! Oh, Mastermind, just a heads up. I don't know if you've flown this plane a lot on autopilot since the patch. Uh -oh. If you Probably. happen to catch the way that I was selecting to climb this time, if you follow me and you do FLC mode, you're going to notice some weirdness when you get to 1,000 to go. Between 1,000 and 500 to go, you're going to... You'll see. <laughs> I haven't checked this plane for dolphining yet. I mean, I still haven't seen it in this one. The only issue I have with this plane r right now is that the slowdown, uh, the pitch down issue yeah. when it gets to the level off mode. I'm still impressed at like some of the detail in the flight in the plane models. I was noticing on the 208 that there's like a smudge on the right window. And, like, this one has, like, scrapes on the window. Oopsies. <laughs> oh! Double oopsies. That's why you're overheating. Uh, air intake on? Uh, oh, inertial separator, yeah. Got it. I forgot to click it off once I got stabilized. I need to remember, I'm in a piston plane. I need to lean as I climb. Not flying the turbo prop like I've been flying for the last couple days. I think that's the that's the next thing I really want to focus on is how to run each aircraft as efficient as possible. Are you on? You're not on that mode. So like, what to uh, lean them to? What conditions to be running the turbo props? Those sort of things. What's the yeah. what the most efficient um, 
throttle and RPM setting and stuff like that. Because, like, you know, max flight speed doesn't necessarily mean best. Or flight ceiling isn't necessarily the most efficient. You know, it typically is for the jets. Like, you want to be up high. Um, but for, like, this plane, I think we figured out the other day that it was running more efficient at that 10,000. Uh, 13,500. Because that should be... So if you look at the nav graph here, on our flight, yeah, uh, f ooh. We're crossing a section that's Was got 14,300. Oh, well, I thought I only... I didn't. I must have missed that one. Yeah. Oh, shit. The, <laughs> um, Guadalajara? Is that after Guadalajara? Has 19,5. Wait, what? Yeah, we've got Hold a section. We've got a section that's actually two thousand or twenty thousand, right before. Um, I'm seeing twelve one right here. You're not seeing this twenty. I'm seeing here. Let me bring it up. Um, I'm seeing twelve one in the Guadalajara Square. Let me see sky vector just real quick to make sure I'm not drunk. That's not that one. Guadalajara has basically ten thousand six hundred before it, but if you go, yeah, Mexico City, right next to Mexico City is eighteen seven hundred. Right, and that's clear out of Mexico City, but up to Guadalajara, I'm seeing 12-1. Why is... And we can worry about Mexico City when we get closer to Mexico City. Yeah, I'm fine at 13-5 right now. I'm just thinking the entire flight. Yeah, here, just west of uh, Veracruz is a 19-4. That area is so cluttered in Avagraph. Yeah, I got 18-1 in that square. Yeah. For Mexico City. No, we're we're totally fine. You're absolutely right, though. On to Guadalajara, we're fine at thirteen five. Oh, there's I the twenty. The twenty is over here by Re uh, after by Mexico Rexus. City. Yeah, it's yeah. essentially Rexus. Yeah, we're fine thirteen five hundred until we pass over Guadalajara. Right here. Okay, pressurization. What do you look like? Are you are you okay? Are you happy? Are you are we okay here? You're at two for the differential. Okay, I should be able to climb to thirteen then. And I'm just about to cross ten thousand. I don't suppose we have a uh, Ada Mazatlan Center Beechcraft. Mazatlan. Dude, that dude is Eagle really excited. Mazatlan Center. Request flight following. Beechcraft November 42 Echo Oscar November Mazatlan Center. Ma Mazatlan. Mazatlan Center. Why is backspace and back right over each other? User experience. Flight following just gave me altimeter 29.80. Okay. Copy Beechcraft Echo Oscar November. Wait. Oh! We're not in the United States. Transition altitude is probably lower. Yeah. Is it? Uh, because when I hit when I hit the button to sink mm -hmm. the barometric pressure, it's giving me standard, which means which tells me that transition altitude here for that is probably ten thousand feet. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably ten thousand feet here. Because I noticed that uh, 
when I'm flying in the States, if I climb over 18,000 and hit that button, it goes to 2992. It sets up for standard. Instead of actual. Okay, let me just pull the throttle way back so you can catch up. I have about a thousand feet to go to level off, 1,500. Uh, my total airspeed right now is 162, but as I level off, that'll increase. It is a pretty. I love the like gentle curving beach here. It, it feels like Long Beach area of um, Washington, where it's that whole peninsula, and you just drive mm -hmm. from Columbia all the way up to like Puget Sound. Just do a little uh, climbing check. Gear up, flaps up, fuel both on and cross feet on. Uh, oh! Outside air is six. I didn't. Is on. Maybe on. on. We don't need the icing. Strobes on. Uh, I guess we, yeah, we'll leave the strobes on. Um, we could at this point turn the <laughs> lights are off. So we're good to go. On. What you looking for, Kleinster? I'd be more than happy to help you. I don't have a current command, but what you looking for? Do, 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 do. Oh, looking good there. Yeah, I should be leveling off. Alright, my uh, airspeed went up to 160. Or sorry, total air, airspeed is 182 now. I mean true airspeed? True airspeed, yes. I don't know why I keep saying total, but then intake air temperature, so. True airspeed is. Uh, I think he's going to level out one, right around 190. It's at 188, it's slowly ticking up. We're on that, we've got 100 to go to our first waypoint. Is yours first tiny TNY? Yes. Okay. You and I haven't seen. Hmm. Oh, it has been. I was like, when's the last time the bot did the multi man? We should go here and just do it. <laughs> I also just realized that the clip link for the bus is called Litigious Crowded Soy Milk Fun Engineer. Yep. Awesome. Ooh, I don't like that flap setting. Awesome. Alright, has anybody played Squadrons? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, 193. Really true. Anybody played Squadrons today? Not yet. Anybody planning on playing Squadrons? I'm considering that one. Once I get my flight stick, I don't know yet. It looks good, but it looks like it's a multiplayer title with a very short and non feature full campaign mm. bolted onto it. Yeah, so Shardies, we were talking about that at the beginning of stream. Um, I was I really wanted to get kind of a group together to be able to do the more economic side or the more economy side of um, flight sim. Um, unfortunately, right after we started getting the group together, 
the band, I mean, uh, they had, you know, to stop taking applications. So they're still working on the automated acceptance, but I know, like, Mastermind has been waiting, what, three, three, four weeks now? Um, I know they're so close, but they've been so close for a while. And I really want to, like, yeah. So we we did a little bit of FS, or sorry, of um, on air. air. I blew the two together all along. So we did a bit of on air at the start of stream tonight. Um, because that has automated registration. It is a subscription model, though. Um, but I started a on stream, on air world. But once FSE comes back on, um, once we can get Mastermind and whoever else wants to join, I want to be able to do some more group stuff in FSE. Because, like, we can do group job. That sounds totally wrong. I'm going to rephrase that and retry that one again. We can do some group flights. Um, or we can start working together to ferry. Yeah, we can have a party <laughs> line. Um, I, com <laughs> I completely own the uh, my G58 now in FS Economy. I don't think... It is a deluxe plane. I don't think anybody else has deluxe, but if anybody does, I have no problem um, letting anybody else in the group. I can just, like, give ownership of it to the group um, so that anybody in the group can use it rent-free. And our next goal is working towards getting a DA-62. I think that's what we decided. A DA-62 for anybody in the group to use. Um, and those, I think, are about 400000 500000 But we can get there. And then we currently own two one-slot FBOs um, that are generating passengers for anybody in the group that wants to do those jobs. They all point to PDX. I think I pointed to PDX. Maybe pointed to Eugene. Crap, I don't remember. Either way. <laughs> I, the, uh, what are the FBOs that we have? One of them is called, I think one of them is Evil Ranch. But they're basically, they're both like gravel strip FBOs. Where are they at? Yeah, assignments. I flew into that one in East Oregon the other day. Yeah. I had my time set, so I thought that I would be getting like a dusk landing. Yeah. No, it was full dark by the time I got there. <laughs> Whoopsies. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. There is a luckily on my luckily on my third attempt, uh, an AI aircraft had spawned in, or was it an AI or was it like a fire truck or something with its headlights at the end of the runway so I could see. <laughs> That's awesome. There, I may have to fly my 58 in and take this job. There is at that ranch, or at the uh, the one in Eastern Oregon. There's currently a corporate jet job there, um, a five passenger VIP job. Which is seventy three hundred. Now it's a long flight. It's a five hundred mile flight, but that might be fun. Up to Alberta. It's called so here. It's called corporate jet hire, but it doesn't really matter like if you use a jet or not. It's just that these are. Um, it's got five passengers, so you have to have a plane that carries at least five, and it's a VIP job, which means that this you can't hold these. So, like, I can't say, take this flight and hold it for later. Um, and you can't have any other flights at the same time. So you basically, any of these VIPs, it's like, this is the job you're working on. But, you know, that's $7,300. So, like, I can't take this one and one of these at the same time. But, here, let me... You, you want me to show you some of the ways that I made some monies real quick? Okay. First off, let's look at Eugene. So this is K-E-U-G. Eugene. Coming to you live and fast. Um, here, you've got several... There are several other FBOs that point to this. So there's KLKV, the, which is um, Lake County, or Lakeview. There's um, Antelope. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, Cape Blanco, and 
Bandon, which is southeast, and then um, Bend. So you'll notice that each of these have like three or four. Um, and there's usually sitting here, right here. Ooh, that needs a ton of power. Um, but here's a bear at 58. But he's not right. But anyways, what I was doing is I was taking my Baron 58, which has five seats, and I was getting this thing that have one, two, three, four, five, to Cape Blanco. And then if you go to Cape Blanco, there's return jobs. One, two, three, four, five. So five out, five back. It's like $4,000 um, each way. And uh, you can make some money pretty quick. And this is under 100 miles. So you can do it in about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And Eugene's got several of these. Um, you get a Tillamook, which unfortunately FSC has a little bit older, um, has is like 15 years old as far as airport designations. So Tillamook now is KTMK, but in FSC it's S47. Who did it? I heard it. I heard it growl. I heard it growl and I have too many windows. Who was that? Oh my god, somebody tell me. I prost you? Alright, whatever. Thanks for the follow. That's probably L, it's probably Le. Um But same thing, Tillamook has the same kind of thing. Is it's got a bunch of what is this? Oh somebody put in the code. Um Tillamook has a bunch of FBOs at points too where you can get like a pretty full flight there and back. Um I flew into Yakima a couple times. Uh, Fa Harbor, which is actually just Friday Harbor. Friday Harbor is a good one, too. Um, if you see these here, these type A are all in flights. And these, there's going to be a plane. When you take this this flight, it is has a designated aircraft for it. So if you happen to have a... Where is it? Is Right here. If you happen to have a Boeing 377 in your simulator, you could take this job, and it gives you the plane to fly. Uh, but you could also do stuff like, if you wanted to fly, let's say, an A320. A320s are only all-in jobs. Oh, don't need to do rental on that. So you could find airports. These are all airports that currently have A320s at them. And all of these airports are going to have all-in jobs that are for an A320. So, like, here. Like, it's Fort, Fort Lauderdale. So, is it this one right here? Is it 178CF? 178 right there. So, there is... There's your Airbus. So, if you took this job right here, it would be to fly that Airbus to... Uh, Valencia in Venezuela. Actually, that would be kind of a fun flight. That's Florida to Venezuela. So if you're looking to fly an A320, you can do that in FSE, and it's gonna, you literally, like, the job gives you the plane. So, yeah. I want a TC3. Anyways, that's, that's FSE. What you looking at? The water did weird things down here? Yeah. And I thought it was a glitch, but now that I'm down here, I can't tell if it's a glitch or if this is a real thing. This looks like an area that probably floods. I'm not entirely certain. Well, we could take a look. So we're at... Oh, I can't zoom in on that map. Whoop, oh, pay attention to this, the other monitor. Um, we're probably oh, that looks legit. Look at this. Here, I'll bring it over. That is the Agua Brava. That is... Now, it looks like the water is just a little high, but this definitely looks like an area that has... Um, oh, some kind of wacky floodplain thing. Okay. Yeah, or slough, huh. I think. But I could see, like, at high tide, this could back flood here. Because you can definitely huh. see that there's, like, water, still water... This is probably super muddy.
it, from the air, it looked like a glitch. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess it kind of is with the water over it, yeah. but. A Santa Barbara to Santa Barbara. Oh, yeah. We're 60 miles to our first waypoint to rough water. Right. Yeah, this is a flood plain or a slough or something. I can see where we may need to gain some elevation or gain some altitude. I think mud flats. So as you get closer to the equator, the uh, tides actually get smaller and smaller. <laughs> this area, the mud flats, yeah. This area needs a 7.7. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> The uh, the tides at the poles are much greater than the tides at the equator. <laughs> What's that, Sturbo? Uh, I remember being in Alaska and the tide was like 20, 25 feet. One of the areas we would go fishing had like... At high tide, it was like right in the middle of Anchorage. At high tide, it looked like it was just an inlet or a bay or something like that. And as the tide went out, the water receded into a windy creek. So what we would do is we would, at high tide, at high tide, you would walk out at street level onto the top of basically a mud flat, and you'd have to have like chest high waders and everything, and you care very careful walking along, and and you'd be in like two or three foot deep water. As the tide would go out, you could actually see the salmon swimming between your legs and you could you, like, see the wake that they would make. And more than once, I had a salmon like hit my leg or something. And the water would funnel into the creek and as it would funnel in, it would bring the salmon in with it and that's when you would basically fish as it was funneling them into this really small area and they were swimming up creek. And at, the, at low tide, it would go all the way down into be like a three, four foot wide creek. And it would make that transition in six, you know, six hours. It would do transition, f like a depth of 25, 30 feet transition on the tide every six hours. It was nuts. Yeah, Shardy's the uh, Newport, Oregon to Lincoln City, Oregon area yeah. is basically this giant mud pit that floods daily with the yeah. tide. So it's kind of a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah, we have live weather on. It just happened to be that <laughs> we're getting nine knots at 69 degrees. Nice. <laughs> the last flight we were on, we were in Portugal. That had a tailwind of 26 knots. So we're still okay at, yeah, this is 13,000. We're still okay at 13,000 all the way to Guadalajara, right? I think so. Okay. And then that's where we need to start paying attention to uh, altitude. Yeah, as we get closer to Mexico City, I think we may have some issues. I don't remember what Mexico City, yeah, it's the wrong thing. Pressurization, you doing okay over here, bud? Yeah, you doing okay. Oh, you never descended back down. Okay, you're fine. You never had time. Yeah, see, Guadalajara Airport is at 5,000 feet. Yeah, 
And Mexico City is... Oh, jeez. I didn't realize Mexico City was that high. Is uh, The airport is at 7,300. Okay. And there's a range right before it. Huh. Learn, learning so much. That's definitely one of those. You uh, want to sh shoot a landing at Mexico City? We could shoot a landing in Mexico City. Yeah, we could. That's a. I might let you guys shoot a landing wide circle. But I don't know. We'll see what it feels like when we get to Mexico City. We'll also see what time I'd do it's math. Like. On, I'd do math on your fuel as well. Yeah. At that point. And this is definitely our longest leg we have charted. It's not right, but we don't have to go all the way to the destination. Right. We just we just plotted a route. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's definitely shoot for Mexico City, and then depending on time, we may we'll try to extend it to Veracruz. But I think yeah. at the very least, Mexico City is a good goal because that actually would be kind of a fun landing to plot. I'm interested. What is the... <laughs> there has, there's an ILS 4 runway uh, 05 but it has you basically going parallel to the mountains all the way down and do a curving descent to hit the ILS glide slope is that a DME arc? yeah you said it's for runway 05 in yeah. Mexico City let me take a look at this guy there's a 23L as well which might be safer but Ain't even that. Yeah, the DME for 23L starts at uh, 10,200. Wait, that's not a DME. That's not even a DME mark. Oh, wait, is it? That's weird. This one's marked weird. Oh, you're not hugging the mountain. You're over it. That, see, did you see the transition altitude on that lit section? It's 9,700 feet. You're still above it. Uh, yeah, but you come down to... Uh 8,800 during 88, the uh, turn. During the turn, and 8,800 is lower than the peak that's there, just to the west. The peak is 9,170. Right. Yeah, but you're still at 9,700 when you're at that point. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you look at... Uh, <laughs> did you look at the second? The DV2? Approach on... Yeah, on 2-3 left. Oh, no, no, 2-3 left. The go-around the go, the go around on 2-3 left for DME2. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It has you going the other way out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a tight turn. To climb out. Oh, yeah. ILS DME2 for 0-5 right is more what I would expect instead of that arc. Yeah. I would expect a vector for... That almost looks like a vector to the localizer. This is an interesting approach plate. Which one? Y yes. <gasps> All of them. Oh. They look okay to me. 
Actually, what does the VOR DME into 5 look like? Oh, yeah, the VOR DME looks exactly, almost exactly like the ILS plate. Yeah. It's almost the exact same approach. Actually, it is, just without the runway feather. The descent angle is a little different because it's got both runways. So it's got them both basically starting at the same point, but it's got a slightly steeper descent if you're going to 5L or 05L. Oh, yeah, it yeah, yeah. Early. Well, the ILS plates are kind of assuming airliner, so a shallower approach can feel a little bit better with a heavier plane. Yeah. Whereas a VOR DME is kind of assuming a lighter aircraft that can you know, handle a steeper descent better. I shouldn't When I'm looking at stuff outside of the flight sim, I shouldn't be staring at the dashboard. <laughs> so you guys can actually see out the window. How many times have people said that? <laughs> Crash the nice. Oh my gosh! On this long of a flight, the weather is going to be so desynchronized. Oh yeah, it is. I forgot about that. It's going to be so desynced at the destination. I almost wish there was a multiplayer option that would let you select what gets synchronized to the people flying with you. Mm. Like you could select what, whoop, I should slow down before I... Good thing before we have different you, altimeter before settings. Before you run into me? Uh, Good thing we uh, have different altimeter settings. <laughs> uh, uh, I think... You're violating safety distance. Is it a thousand feet? <laughs> like thousand feet clearance minimum. <laughs> it's like a hundred feet. Now, what was I saying? Oh, uh, I wish we could. You could tell it that you don't want to synchronize weather, and then that would let the players, the client. Oh, that wouldn't work very well though. Because if I loaded up Rex and had accurate, more accurate weather, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if my approaches look different because my weather is more accurate. Yeah, it's a good compare. Where is Mastermind? Mastermind's not going to slam into me, is it, are they? Oh, maybe they will. No, Mastermind's up at uh, 17,000 feet mm -hmm. and descending. You, however, I'm looking right at your tailpipe. <laughs> caution, caution, wake turbulence. <laughs> yeah, we're just doing the, practicing our mid-flight refueling. <laughs> Here, I'll fix this. I'll fix this little issue. No, 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 no. Have the boom operator take control. <laughs> Listen, I'm pretty much in perfect position and holding level. I need fuel. I don't really, but. Okay, this is going to be the most political thing I'm going to say tonight, and then I'm going to move on. I I really love when people try to argue that so-and-so something or other is protected under HIPAA, like they understand what HIPAA is, but they <laughs> misspell HIPAA. <laughs> just, a, just a heads up, like I've worked in, you know, like the health insurance and benefits yep. industry for almost 15 years now. If you misspell HIPAA to me, you're done. You can just stop talking about privacy then, because you... Yeah, exactly. Hippo the hippo. Just a little adds up. It's Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It doesn't have two P's, it has two A's. I've actually seen that on 
Oh, oh, I've reviewed resumes before that were applying for like a benefits specialist job. And they were like, I understand HIPAA. And they spell it wrong. Ugh. Round file yeah. tap it. Yeah, it, it tells me you're not uh, not an expert in that field. Yeah, at least Google the thing before you put it on your resume. <laughs> like, I don't expect most people to know what the penalties are for each level that, like, egregious or repeated um, violations can actually be criminal offenses or $25,000 in civil penalties. Like, I don't need people to understand the specific levels of that. But if you tell me that you have knowledge of, like probably the most well-known privacy law, and you don't get the name right. Yeah. <laughs> and Shardines, you apparently have had to watch a quick training video. What? I saw name tag. You apparently have had to watch a quick training video about HIPAA before, because every single HIPAA video I've ever seen has a HIPAA in it. Funny you say that, Shardies, because that was a thing in the Navy. Yep. If you bubbled in your name wrong, your test was a failure. I... I it, you, newer that's guy why there was school. a lot of time given for verifying information and filling out the top correctly. I knew a guy in high school that got a 150 on his SATs. Yep out of, yeah. you know, you had two, that, and that was the time where you had two tests that were 100 to 800 each. So the only way he got 150 is because he didn't put his information correct in one of them. Mastermind's going in for some sightseeing. Yeah, it's been buzzed a few times already. <laughs> I do like when the uh, TVM flies by. It sounds like a P-51. So shiny. Now while that's doing that... Oh my god, I have so many windows. Is that... Yes. Is that a railroad that's like cutting down from the north and then doing like a paperclip maneuver? Hairpin getting through the town? I mean, it could be. <laughs> Interesting. You didn't see that. Welcome to the Academy. So, one of the, like, big hubbubs in On Air right now is they just added weekly maintenance fees for FBOs. And admittedly, it's a little high. Um, but FBOs previously didn't have any, like, upkeep or anything. So there's, like, there's people that have hundreds of FBOs. And they're now having weekly fees of, like, a million, two million, three million dollars for all their FBOs. Oof. Whoopsie. Like, here's an example. I have, in in the one that I have, um, in the other server that I'm actually playing offline, I have a very small FBO at uh, Boeing Field. And all it has is crew rooms and a single tie-down, and the weekly ownership on it is 2700 um, So I, I don't have anything like cargo hangers or anything like that. I literally just have, like, a place for them to, to lay their heads. So the people that have, you know, thousands of these scattered around with giant workshops and fuel tanks and everything, you know, I'm just, just checking on my other pilot to see where they're at. Where are you in your recorder? Oh, you're about halfway there. Okay. Um, I am going to get up for a minute. And let autopilot okay. do its thing. Oh, we switched to the next beacon. I totally. We j yep. We literally just went over it. 
It was in that town, and I totally wasn't even paying attention. Okay. Uh, it's in the airport. Right? It's at the yeah. end of the airport right here. Yeah. That you're passing over. I, I looked at the GPS and just saw that I literally passed over. Yep. Okay. I am going to step away for a minute. I will be right back. I'm going to mute everything, but I'll leave the plane going. Okay. Another uh, volcano coming up, Mastermind. Blown out one, looks like. Oh, what does the synthetic vision look like? It's looking okay. Ever overcorrect real bad. Wasn't quite sure why you were that far out. I thought maybe you were scoping out the mountain over there. <laughs> you did put a full, full tank of gas though, right? Fields are so colorful over here. Wait, is that? There's farmland inside the volcano. Wow. That's some dedication. Or is that it? Oh, wait, is that it? Is that a meteor impact? Or asteroid impact? Huh. Sure looks like a volcano. That hill in the middle has me questioning it, though. the ninth <laughs> yeah that uh well no shardy's the hill oh yeah, yeah yeah i suppose it could be it rebuilt yeah yeah, yeah. that makes sense that it rebuilt itself like st Helens did started to that makes sense
Yeah, that makes sense to me. That's probably what it is. Because that definitely looks volcano-ish to me. I'm so tempted to divert over to that waterway over there and canyon fly, but I think it's going to steer more toward the north. Wolf Creek Meteorite Crater. Wow, that looks really flattened. Huh. Yeah, I heard him creeping up. I was slowed down because my speed had picked up. <laughs> Apparently, my altitude settled down to his level or his climb to mine. The pressure. I'm guessing his climb because ours can't change as the client. Ours is going to be stuck. Oh, that means I can sink it. That one. Hang on. Okay. Detour. I gotta take a closer look at this spot. I think I got enough fuel for this. This looks nutty. Look at that.
where is a Sherna or Rocket Sage when you need them? Look at this. I don't even know what to make of what I'm seeing here. Uh, it's the Great Wall of Mexico. It's the Great Wall of Mexico. I... Sorry, no, it but it's definitely it crazy. Me. It's like a volcano rebuilt itself and blew its top two times. Oh, yeah, that could totally happen, like, if the cone collapses. Yeah, but it looks like it rebuilt a mountain. Yeah, that could inside. totally happen. Like, it looks crazy. Like, think Mount St. Helens Part 2. The redo. Yeah, but St. Helens didn't build back up like this. That's what the Part 2 comes in. Yeah. Dude, this is a tourist attraction. I gotta find this mountain now. I'm putting this on my list to see in real life. There's like a hiking trailer or an off-road trailer around the ring, the inner ring. I I gotta go see this place in real life. I feel this like I visited nuts. that in um, Just Cause or something. Maybe. Southeast of Guadalajara. Probably find it. <laughs> I'm gonna circle it one more time and then I'll climb back up and catch up. You'll never be able to catch yeah, you're fine. Is there a little city to the east of that? Uh, to the east? No. Oh wait, yeah, maybe there is down there. I wasn't looking at the ground on that side, I was looking at the fountain. I pulled up my, my split screen map, so I'll be able to find it in the VOD, hopefully and I can figure it out. Oh, I should, got to, I should go to interior view so I can find the... I mean, you know the other DME. thing you can do. There's the, yeah, there's the DME from Tiny. Or to Guadalajara, I mean. It is... That should help me find it. Basically, over El... Cares, Paul? El... Is that it? Excuse me. Climb up and over the top of it. This is probably easier to figure out this way. <laughs> can't see because the thing with the exact spot that we need it to be at. T E Q See it's pretty somewhere here. There's like large chunks of rock on top of it, dude. That's nuts. That it flung stuff that large straight up. Uh. Oh yeah, there is a town to the east. Nestled up in the next set of hills. Oh, I'm adult. We're not at Guadalajara yet. No. Yeah, but I was looking southeast of Guadalajara. Hmm. 
No, we're uh, 75 miles northwest. Is there a lake in there? I didn't see one, but there might be. There was kind of a spot that had some light, like super faint blue to it. Yeah, so maybe. maybe. That's and it kind of looked like it was. That's what looks like it was dipped for. a little bit, so oh, it looked like you know maybe what? one could form. <laughs> here, chat. You tell me. Is it this little thing here, or is it this gigantic thing here? <laughs> it's actually the little thing. Uh, it's the little one. Yeah, we passed the big one. Yeah, it's that's it. Vulcan. That's it. Cyber court here. I'll just send you the link. Yeah, give me the the map link. Uh, yes, share it to my Facebook. It's exactly <laughs> what I want you to do. I'll actually put it in the group because I'm sure Mastermind is gonna be like, I want it too. Uh, make sure that works. Nope. Because I think I clicked a button. Let me try this again. <laughs> Let's see if it works with this. Oh yeah, I totally did. I added a digit. Would make would make sure. There we go. That one. That one should work. So for anybody else that wants it, it is I just put it in our Discord link, or Discord channel weather. Okay. But it's that. Thank you. Da -da -da. Yeah, that's like Google. Tell me about this place. I want to know. Grubhub. Yep, still not what I care about. Seboroco is a Dactic Stratovolcano located in Mexico. The largest eruption, the blah 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 blah, was around 930 AD plus or minus 200, releasing 11 cubic kilometers of tephra. That's a lot of. Hey, look to my right, or like straight ahead to the right. There's another cone volcano there. The most recent and best documented eruption lasted from 1870 to 1875 with Framaroli activity lasting well into the 20th century. The mountain features one large caldera created during the Hala eruption with a much smaller crater nestled inside that formed when Dos Equis lava dome collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're such dumb Americans for laughing at that. Yeah, we are. <laughs> when <laughs> the caldera... <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Collapse around 1180. With both of these craters, within both of these craters are several explosive volcanic features, including yeah. Sequoia deposits, lava domes, and something domes or cinder cone volcanoes. Cooled lava flow preser flows preserved around the volcano keep a record of the recent eruptions. Before the hollow eruption, there is a record of one major lava flow called the Yep. During the 500 years <laughs> after the eruption. The volcano was at its most active, leaving a record of six major lava flows. <laughs> what is up, Loud noises. Saber? What are you doing up Hi this Raiders. late? I mean, not watching rocket launches or anything, but what are you doing up this late? Saber, how you been? Uh, uh, enter. 
I mean, you're an adult. So you can do that's whatever. That's a you're. really. That is a that's lot. That's a really of, like, recent volcano for that much activity, then, huh? Yeah. That's and crazy. Whatever this one is here, which is another like. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of volcanic activity along here. It's part of the the Cascade Range that extends all the way to... I guess it, yeah. makes, it makes sense that this... We're doing good. We're continuing our around the world. Uh, you may notice in the top right, there's pro streamer moves. It's just a Navigraph inset, so you can see our path. Um, our flight plan's currently from Mazatlan over Guadalajara, Mexico City, and then Veracruz. But we're... <laughs> Shardies, come on! I've <laughs> <laughs> only really done that like twice. Oh, oh, that's what you correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that what you corrected? <sighs> can I just say? Can I just say I love our community? Yeah, I'm sure you do. I was going to put that out there. Dual oh, yeah. How's Dual Universe treating you? So, I saw a game on YouTube today. It looks like it's not quite released yet, but, and I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but I'm totally going to get it. Um, it looks like Hard Space Shipbreaker, but like an entire everything. Um. Um, um, you know exactly um, what I'm thinking of. Yes, I showed this one to Darko. Um, Starbase. No. Good try that. Oh, really? Uh, now I need to see if I can find it. And you must have found one that's not on my radar. I was, I was lurking a little bit the other day when you were building a, a tear down, a landing pad and stuff. Tear down, huh? Gonna have to look that one up. Uh, yeah, it's literally it's teardowngame.com. <laughs> Here, look. Uh, it's basically like a destruction gamey. I guess it's probably a little bit to say. Usually not my cup of tea if destruction is like the primary mechanic, but I do like to look at all types of games. Oh, I don't want music. Oh, you know, if it's just straight up destruction, then maybe not. I was hoping it was more of a like. Wait, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, never mind. This is just straight up destruction. Oh, I was, I was yeah, hoping it was more mind. of like take contra contracts to like disassemble and reclaim, but no, it's clearly just like voxely destruction. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Plus, everything is voxels. It's like, eh. I mean, I, I kind of like the idea of everything being voxels, but I don't like that it. it's literally just like, here's a bunch of tools, destroy everything. Yeah. yeah. I'll pass on that one. Um, yeah, I was hoping it was like, go reclaim this house, or this thing needs to be thingy, or something like that, but no, apparently not. Apparently not. How are we doing? We got 28 to our next waypoint. So our next waypoint, I think, is Guadalajara, right? Like, if I get back to my map track, uh, yes, yes, I have Guadalajara's VR next. And then, yeah, okay. Think. Here, I'll leave it on this so y'all can see the like actual world map. Since the in-game VFR map is one crap and two crashes your game. Uh, uh, yes, GDL. Yes. And then the next one act after that I've got is MLM. Correct. 
How am I doing on fuel? 58. One, two, three. Mexico Center Beechcraft November 4 to Echo Oscar November 13,400 feet. Is it? Hold them up yet that we can like do campfires now. Uh, I get an altimeter of 29993. Right, but your weather's updating. Touche. <laughs> Plus, I'm pretty sure we're above the altitude for this country to use standard. I mean, that's what I got back from ATC. Uh, unfortunately, Mastermind, like, up and well, in. Two weeks ago, it was so hot that a single spark would set the state on fire, so. That's not really an exaggeration. I think it's supposed to be warm again this weekend. And then it'll cool off, maybe? Guadalajara just handed me to Mexico City, and Mexico City is handing me back to Guadalajara. Y'all need to talk <laughs> to each other so that you. Like, I shouldn't be on Guadalajara approach. I'm leaving. Oh, I guess I am getting a Guadalajara. Never mind. Okay, that's actually fair enough. I've noticed that the handoff in the sim kind of bounces a couple of times when you're crossing that line. Oh, especially like Bay Area where you're going in and out of like Travis and um, and. Uh, Seattle, Seattle Center, and then oh, sorry, Oakland Center and Oakland Approach and SFO. Yeah, yeah, so I had that a lot Welcome. when I was. Uh, I noticed it when I was uh, going to Signella. Yeah, when I did road to Signella across the top of Africa, uh, it went. It was like bouncing twice every time I hit. Hey QVR, morning and, and welcome for below. I should, you know, I should, I should do this thing again. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this thing is. Luckily, I dialed in 100 feet above you this time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that is not 100 feet above you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, hi? Uh, it'd probably be that easier. That is not 100 above. <laughs> Four below, it would probably be easier for me to say when I'm not playing Flight Sim right now, which Hold is on. essentially when I'm sleeping. They cannot, um, which is kind of a safety feature, and part of the reason why it's okay to have multiplayer on. Uh, when you get within, essentially, with each other's hitboxes, what is it, like 50 feet apart, um, you phase out. So there's not there's not airplane collision. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. Like, you have the option to turn on and off different failures, including crash damage and overstress. Oh. Even if you do have crash damage, so if I nose down and slammed in the ground, what you would see is the screen would go to a black screen and say you would, your plane was destroyed via crash damage. You wouldn't see physical destruction of the plane model. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, adding destructible f destruction physics is a huge additional programming step. And two, I don't think many of the airplane companies would be willing to license their products to let people then destroy them. Especially in a flight sim. Guadalajara is huge. I wonder why the sim is giving me standard pressure then, Shardies. I mean, I know I'm on a snapshot of the weather. Yeah. But even back when I should have been... Well, maybe I was outside the weather area. Huh. Because I hit the button way back toward the start of our flight, and it was giving me standard. Interesting. Uh, 
No, no, no. You're totally fine. Uh, no, it I'm getting real weird. did when we were below 10,000, but I noticed when I hit the button above 10,000, it dropped me to uh, standard. Or it set it for standard, so I don't quite... That's what made me think that 10,000 was the standard. Because I've noticed that in s other countries, I was getting it uh, standard pressure at 10,000. Uh, th there's a lot of options you can do. Um, hey, I'm going to pause for just a second, so... Okay. Um, under assistance, there's a lot of things you can turn on and off. So you can you have take off auto rudder. I should have that off. Um, there's a lot of these things you can have on. So like you can have your quote AI pilot take care of your checklist for you, take care of landing assistance. Take care, like there's a lot of this stuff that can be automated for you. Um, it's it's however custom you want it. And same thing like you can have the computer just take care of lights and unlimited fuel. You can just fly around. You can turn on and off all sorts of different kinds of damage. Um, for the most part, like when you're learning, if you want to be more of a sim level, turn these on. If you want to just like fly around and be touristy, turn these off. Um, same thing with navigational aids. You can actually have it where it shows you all the markers and stuff. Um, I have most of them off, um, and then notifications. So there's a lot of I don't know what I saved, but apparently I got an apply I saved. So you can kind of, you can change how much you want to do. Um, yeah, radio, you can have radio communications. Um, and there is, there is uh, an actual AI pilot. Yes. And, and when you go to read reviews about this game, when they're <laughs> talking about autopilot, the reviews have it wrong. Yeah. They're talking about AI control. That's not autopilot. Yeah. Autopilot is the thing in your plane that controls different flight services, surfaces or different avionics depending on what pa avionics package your plane has. Um, AI pilot is literally the virtual person that sits next to you that handles controls and communications and flies things for you. Welcome Wolf Harbin, how you doing? Um, but there are a lot of options you can turn on and off. So you can have it be much more realistic. You can have it be much more just goof around in a plane. And I think depending on how you want to play each day, like I personally change things depending on what I'm doing, what I want to do each day. There is, um, <laughs> there is a thing called slew mode. If you hit Y on your keyboard, you can actually use your number pad to like move your plane around and literally move it to other positions. Um, there is a drone camera, so you can do like, it's called showcase. But let's say here, oh wow, this is, where is my drone at? It must be, why is it at this level? Looks like it's ahead of you. But where is Wait, where me? are you at? I don't know. Can you reset on me? There we go. That was weird. It must have been earlier. I, I can't remember using it. I must have used it earlier or something like that. Um, but you can have like a drone that is literally like a third um, an exterior camera, like imagine controlling a little robotic DJI drone or something, and you can you know move around and, and watch yourself fly from different directions. It's a uh, good sized lake over there. Which this is a good way if you want to get you know awesome pictures for your Twitter feed. Hint hint nudge nudge. You can do something like this and do like rule of three and have it offset to the side so you get like all this landscape stuff and, or you can you could try to count their propellers in flight or you know you can see where the birds bird strike was actually at there's not a bird strike <laughs> hi 
I'm you probably <laughs> not, do you not have a num are you the only person I know that doesn't have a num pad? Come on, so we we're now heading towards MLM. I couldn't live without a num pad. I Yeah, I remember like way back in college. Way back in the day. Um, when I had a laptop. Oh, crud. There's, okay, there's Mastermind. I'm behind you. I, I think lost you, got, you. you got, I'm just far behind you. I can see you. I think I just okay. got too far behind. Okay. There is a real plane somewhere. There's a uh, real life cargo plane coming into Guadalajara. I just don't see their name tag yet, but they're on the radio. I don't have traffic on the map. Um, Ten miles west of Guadalajara. Uh. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. It's lined up for final. Yeah, they just handed him over to tower. I wonder if I can see... You know, it should be able... Let's see if we can do this. I should be able... Wait, why did... Oh! I never reset vertical speed to climb to 14. That's why. It's like, why is it giving me a tone for a thousand to go? I mean, that'd do it. Sitting there bouncing around at 13.8 because I never set the speed <laughs> to climb. Can't my drone make it there before the plane lands? Inquiring minds want to know. We are leaving Guadalajara, Mexico. Accurate. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> We're, I'm literally flying away from where that other plane's coming in. So. When we play these, um, when we do these around the world stuff, what we do is we do group on. So, oh, I see the, I see the uh, nav lights. Um, we do group on and live weather, but not live time. So it's the weather as of the time we set it. And we're not even gonna talk about the time, do you think? Um, but then I also do live traffic. So it'll have, it'll pick up real world traffic based on flight plans. So this flight here and the radio traffic you heard from it, I think the radio traffic is ATC or is that AI, but this plane right here, you can see the nav beacons coming into land. If you actually look up, when I get close to this, you should, there you go. You should see the flight path there. If you go to like flight aware and look up MA, sorry, MAA1861, you should see the actual flight plan for this plane that probably landed a couple minutes ago. Up to, I think, 15 to 20 minutes ago. Because it is a little bit delayed and it's reading off flight path. Oh, actually, this came from LAX. Uh, Look at that. But would that be a landed just now or would that be landed in the past based on the time? Oh, that's a good point. I don't know that I know the answer Cause, to that. Because we're Cause still we're not, not yeah. sure on how the historic stuff works as far as weather and traffic goes. I mean, there's a way to find out. MAA, is that 1861? This area looks kind of dangerous to fly general aviation. It looks like when you get up to the higher altitude, it looks a little bit flatter, but I could just see these hills every once in a while. And yeah. If you're not paying attention, those could sneak up on you. I don't know that you have a ton of general aviation in, uh, in Mexico. Where are you? Speaking of hills sneaking up, synthetic vision still looks oh, okay. Oh yeah, it's landed back at at uh, LAX. So 
So when did you take off from Guadalajara? <laughs> I dream about flight sim. Can I get the flight history, please? Actually, you know what? I don't care. But anyways, it's back in LA, so it must be as of the time that we did. That's what I'm thinking. Let me get this to you. Uh, reset position. That's the way it should work, at least. Yeah. I get Fine, I will contact Mexico Center. One, two, three, decimal zero, Beechcraft, Echo, Oscar, November. <laughs> Mexico Center, Beechcraft, November 4 to Echo, Oscar, November 13,500 feet. Beechcraft, November 4 to wow. Echo, Oscar, Zero, November 13,000 feet. Wow, 0 Continue to Mike Lima, Mike has planned. Altimeter tree, zero decimal, zero niner. Yeah, I'm still getting standard pressure, so we must yeah. be way outside of the area that the sim's going to give us weather. And I'm betting we're going to be stuck with clear weather for the rest of the flight out on the client side. I mean, it's clear weather for me, so... Well, clear we Well, you wouldn't have a different pressure then. You should have 2992 for clear. Like the preset, I think it. Yeah. I think it gave us the preset. Okay. For this. Um. Well, hang on. My hang on. night bot doesn't. You must have. Um, there's a setting in Twitch about like parental controls and what you know. Um, I don't see anything on that that would flag it for me, but there might. You might have a setting on your client side. Well, it's when I'm hitting the button, it's giving me standard, but let me tune. Oh, does a, a four below, does it say check out them and then star, star, star emotes too? <laughs> Apparently, whatever setting you have on hey. yours, consider Smexy as a, uh, as an explicit Spe Speaking content. of, speaking of emotes is missing an E. No, that, that's intentional. That's uh, stylish. That was a design choice. I just that has been it there for two that. years, and you just now... <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, thanks for the sub for below. Loud noises. Lots of loud noises. So um, next, at the when we get to Mexico City, I'll check the weather from a station, because I'm hitting the hotkey to set the altimeter, and that might be what's doing it. That might be what's causing it to set, which is, is incorrect it? because according to Shardy's, it shouldn't set standard unless I'm above 18.5. Uh, question. We passed Guadalajara. <laughs> Thanks, for See, the trick is, I'm not a streamer. I'm just a dude that plays video games and shares with people. My actual job is, like, really lame and nerdy. I'm not a streamer. Uh, but... We have to worry about altitude now. Uh, I checked synthetic vision a minute ago, and I'm looking at a lot of blue. Um, so we've got into our next waypoint. We should be okay into there. We're like right across the corner of a zone that's got 14-1. Um, but then as we get into Mexico City, your button set standard to three. Oh, interesting. That is Mexico City. Okay. Uh, ooh. Yeah. Now that okay. makes me wonder if I have a firewall issue or something that's blocking the sink. Could be. Mastermind, is your if you look down on your PFD at the clock, is it ticking away ten seconds and then resetting? Uh, did I tune my center? Yeah, I just tuned center. But is, it, is your clock 
ticking away 10 seconds at a time. It is. It's doing 10 Interesting. Seconds. So you're seeing different <laughs> weather. You're getting a different weather report than I am. But yet your clock is... Shut saber. Stuck in a time loop. Huh. Kia, we just flew over Guadalajara. Um, currently we're playing... I, I literally like... Hmm. That's Guadalajara right back there. Um, we are currently planned to Veracruz. But we'll probably call it around Mexico City. Because we're going to fly right over Mexico City and then our, our, we're charted to Veracruz via Mexico City. But we've had conversations already about uh, shooting a landing at Mexico City, so we might end up calling it there. Kia, does it have to be the gorge? And how far outside of City Lights are you looking for? Because I've got a spot to the north of me that's actually pretty good. Little bit of light pollution, but not too bad. How long to learn and not feel like a new guy? Uh, I would say for flying, it would not take long at all. Like maybe a day if you sat down and really practiced the basics. Uh, now getting good at it and feeling confident, that takes a while. Can take a while, I should say. Um, what I would strongly right. suggest. Yeah, you're electric. So it kind of like first off, Microsoft Flight Sim is still a game. Yes, it's yeah, got that too. It has the options for some pretty heavy sim factors in it. But at the end of the day, it is a game. It has gamification involved there, um, which does give you the nice option that you can scale things up. Yes, I'm getting 3011, uh, which does give you the option to scale things up. So, like, I'm doing ATC stuff stuff right now. Like, I'm following ATC and doing the transition. You can totally ignore all that. You do not need that to play this game at all. Um, it's literally just a realism feature. Um, you don't need to know like fuel balancing or burn rates or maximum mixtures. Like those are all things you can eventually step into. What I would really focus on when you first get the game, there are some flight lessons. Some, I think they call them ground school, and it's basic stuff like how to turn tune different nav waypoints, how to do landing, how to fly a pattern around an airport and have some basic navigation. I would really focus on getting comfortable with those things first, but also, don't forget at the end of the day, you're supposed to have fun. So don't be so hardcore on yourself that you feel like you have to like, you have to sit down and be know perfectly how to be a pilot. That's, I don't think that should be your goal, especially not, not off the bat, because you will get burned out. Um, but what I've been trying to do is I, because I, I am not a pilot. I am not a licensed pilot by any means. Um, I have zero <laughs> hours of ground school. Um, <laughs> saber. <laughs> saber. Um, but what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to, like, pick a topic I want to learn more about. And I've been watching some <laughs> things on YouTube. Um, there's a couple different... Like, there are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of places that will do um, basic ground school courses on YouTube. And then taking those things and practicing them in the game. So, like, for me, one of the things I've been really trying to do better is practicing my landing approaches so I'm actually closer to the glide slope and not slamming into the ground or not, like, you know, getting getting the approaches as best as I can um, so I'm actually doing smooth landings. And that's one of those things that you just practice, 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 practice. Nice thing about Flight Sim is you can practice, 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 and this is a game. You do it in real life, and you have to have a certified flight instructor with you, and you have to rent the plane, and you have to pay the flight instructor, and it's like four to five hundred dollars an hour. So you can get comfortable with some of those things in the game first, and practice, 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 so that if you want to make the next step and actually go for your pilot's license, 
you at least understand how the plane how planes react um, and the different things like you know a good example is most jets almost well frankly almost all jets that are uh, especially anything in the game don't have an immediate reaction so you know when you take the throttle from 20 percent to 100 percent you're not going to see it suddenly like zoom off like you do in a jet fighter or something like that you'll it'll take time for it to build up torque and build up compression and actually get that acceleration um, and those are things to remember when you're on when you're landing is that you know you need to make sure that you're being s planning a smooth glide slope and a smooth transition because you don't have the option to like just hammer the throttle and take off that's not how planes work Um, my my two biggest things are that there are no dumb questions mm -hmm. around here at least other streams can't <laughs> control them uh, and um, crap I lost my second one <laughs> no dumb questions oh and it, uh, we are multi-streaming I have eight and a half years uh, actual aviation experience and like 10, 000, over 10,000 flight uh, sim flight hours if I do something too quickly on my stream Tell me to stop and redo something slower <laughs> so you can see what I did and so that I can explain it. Because there are times when I will do things too quickly since I, I have muscle memory on a lot of this now, especially in this plane. Um, and to answer your question, for below, this is pretty much this entire community is like aerospace nerds. I mean, you'll notice one of my mods there. Their name is Saber in Space. Um, <laughs> We all kind of like we all kind of cultivated around air or space from basically like wheels up to inner space or wheels up to interplanetary is essentially where we kind of honed our focus. Um, <laughs> wow, Saber, you really in that whole no fun thing, huh? Kia, it's six hundred and sixty-five according to Navigraph. Listen, Saber, just because everything scrubbed this week doesn't mean you have to be grumpy. Uh, okay, I have a question though, Saber. <laughs> if you have, follow. if you end up having fun banning people who are having fun, aren't you in violation of your own rule and have to ban yourself? Saber, I was there. You saw me there. We were talking there. <laughs> <laughs> Just that needs to be done. <laughs> No, Google measurement gave you like a straight line across the an unfolded map. <laughs> sword v sword, go. <laughs> hey, failure! How you doing? You've you've walked into something rather interesting. Just uh, <laughs> sit back, grab a drink. Hi, best friend. Oh, I think the other part for below is if you if you're getting into this, don't be afraid. Oh, I think I said this. Don't be afraid to have fun. Like there's a good selection of aircraft. Pick which ones you want to fly. I would suggest at least getting yeah, a, fly by. using a gamepad. <laughs> so, like, whether it's an Xbox controller or a PS whatever. Like, it is really difficult to fly a plane using mouse and, and keyboard. It can be done. It's just that most of the planes like fine control, and you can't do that with a keyboard. A keyboard tends to be all or nothing. Um... So it is definitely harder to play with just a mouse and keyboard. Um, but if you have, like, Defiance using, you're using a 360 controller, right? Yeah, I'm using a dying Xbox 360 controller and rudder pedals. I do have a set yeah. of rudder pedals, just. Yeah. Wait, did. I, did you didn't just. And I, uh, yeah, and, yeah, Mastermind's on an Xbox One controller. Yeah. It felt, it totally which felt I like looked, somebody Which I looked bumped. at those. Right. You are I looked at those, and that Elite one looks so nice, but $180. Sun? Your shadow is right on my plate. <laughs> Would you mind? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Excuse me. 
It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's not the 747 shadow you used to see. <laughs> no, that's weird. It messes with my mind. But I was like, why? What's changing with the lighting? <laughs> Oh, oh no. Uh. Oh, not again. Not again. <sighs> no, 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 you're fine, Spots. You're fine. You're fine. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> and both. Yeah, spoiler, he does both. And I... he, he'll probably... He'll probably do... Um, the other one Air too hauler. once it's released. <laughs> Air hauler. <laughs> I flew <flipped> both. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh Oh look at that pattern of farms. That looks cool. And I guess I should I should take it a little further. I have I have three different companies in on air. I have one on each server. Both at once would not quite work. Because they here's, would here's. conflict with fuel settings and stuff. Yeah. Like, you'd have to get things absolutely matching. And even then, I think they would. I think it would probably crash. Like, I can have both open because I'm not in active flights. Um, yeah. I think if you try to do tracking in both, they both adjust fuel and they both adjust. Wait time. Oh, and that's the other thing is and the time on the one. Yeah, that, I, the I think the time change would cause issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have to have them. Yeah, like, we were talking about this. We were talking about this last weekend, and we decided that we're all conflict. Like, I'm tempted to see if I can get them matched exactly to see if they'll track both, but I honestly don't think it will. I think they'll cause a conflict in the sim tracking. Who did that? <laughs> Gamma man. Of course. Thanks for the follow. Four below the the elite controller. It has it has some extra buttons on the back. Do those work in Windows as well? Like, is it recognized as a separate controller, or does it just show up as a generic Xbox 360 controller or uh, Xbox One controller? It's so expensive, though. I don't know if I could justify <laughs> that. It does look so nice and with that rubberized grip. My hands sweat so bad that my controller is gross and I have to clean it after everyone. Uh, every that's the one you have, Mastermind, that you were talking about? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if that's the other one you were talking about in Discord or on Twitter. So, <clears throat> Spot, I... Air Hauler's not out yet for FS2020, or uh, Flight Sim 2020. Um, it's still on X-Plane 11. And I don't really know when it will, when or if. I'm sure it'll be at some point. Um, I like FS Economy. Um, the only thing, the only reason I started doing On Air is we were trying to do a group with FS Economy and we got most of our community in before they did the account lock. But several of our community don't aren't in yet. Um, oh, actually, this is a really good time to plug it. We have a group <laughs> in FS Economy. Um, it's currently set on invite only, but if you want to join, um, go ahead and you can go to our Discord there, and then just in like the gaming channel to say like add me and give us your um, flight sim name and we'll sit, shoot you an invite. The group currently has a 172, and we've got a couple one slot FBOs in Oregon, um, and we're working towards getting a um, DA62, uh, and those are those are free for anybody in the group to play. Um, I like I like FS Economy quite a bit. The reason I also do on air is on air is more of a like company an air company tycoon sort of thing, whereas FS Economy or FSE is more of like a I'm a bush pilot or I'm a lone pilot and I'm just taking jobs that walk in the front door. Um, there's also the advantage of on air is newer, so you don't run into as many issues with like 
airports that aren't in FS economy or vice versa, airports that are in FS economy that aren't in flight sim, which if you're doing FS economy, one thing I would strongly suggest, here, I'm going to pull it up. One thing I would strongly suggest is there is a Chrome plugin. You see how I have these little check marks here? You see I have these check marks right here? These check marks are an add-on called Can I Fly There? Uh, yeah, there you go. So this is a this is a Chrome plugin, it's called Can I Fly There? And you've got a couple options, but what this does is it's searching the FSE I code ICO code against your database. And when you go to I think I think when you go to the um, Chrome page, it'll have a link to the FS, the uh, flight sim export for the airport indicators, and that's where this is pulling from. It's a you know it, there's 37,000 some airports, and it's doing a match here. So the things where it's green, there's a match. Things where it's red, there wasn't a match. I will tell you, sometimes it gives you a false indicator about a mismatch. If there is a match, it's a straight match because it's like literally a straight compare. Sometimes it gives you a, a false reading here because it can't do a match because there may have been a name change or something like that. Um, nice thing about this add-on is you can go to, um, like you can find your echo here and you can actually alias it. So a good example of that, because I, I love this airport, and it's one of my favorites, but this is where things have changed. So, FSE has an airport code of S or Sierra 47, which is Tillamook in Oregon. It used to be Tillamook Naval Air Station. Since FSE database was created, this airport has since been renamed to TKM. Sorry. Well, I can just mouse over this. Is it TMK? Yeah, TKM. Sorry, KTMK. Words are different. Do you speak English? No, sorry. Uh, it is now KTMK. So in flight sim, this airport is KTMK. If I go to Sky Vector, it's KTMK. In FS Economy, it's S47. It's still the same airport. You could still fly there. There's a whole bunch of jobs there. I made a bank, a bunch of money out of here. I highly suggest it. For example, Here's a one uh, a Baron 58. If you have a deluxe version, go rent this plane. This is literally the plane I made thousands of dollars off of. Um, I mean, here, <laughs> look at the plane history. Eon Raptor. Eon Raptor. You can go back further. Uh, four below FSC and On Air and Air Hauler. They are basically third-party add-ons yeah. or websites that add a game layer to the simulators. It gives you basically economy jobs to run. Passengers, cargo, etc. Yeah. Here's so a quick synopsis of those. It gives you, they're basically, yeah, they're third party things to try to give you a purpose for flying. Um, so for example, our group owns a Cessna 172. I bought it, we, we, um, farmed the money for it. I bought it, but it was new, and it was in... Yeah, it has career mode. That's a great way of putting it. Um, so the 172 we bought was in Omaha, I think. And we, we flew it. We took the jobs and flew it from Omaha to Oregon while taking cargo jobs all the way. So we ferried it across, but like flew it from airport to airport taking different jobs. So our route wasn't a direct ferry. It was kind of a little zigzaggy so that we could make money all the way. Eh, kind of. Yeah, I wouldn't do... Four below, I wouldn't do any mods or anything when you're first learning to fly. Learn on the aircraft that are built in because they do have, like... Yeah, all the switches and knobs are in the airplanes, but not all of them work. And the most important ones work, for the most part. There are still some aircraft that have some issues, but um, you won't get overwhelmed with having to worry about all the switches when you're learning. 
If yeah, you, QVR, if you... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. See, if anybody that wants to join the uh, FSE community, I just put a link to our Discord there. Um, that should be an invite link. Go and join our Discord under the general game chat. Frankly, we're not super, like, regimented right now on the different channels. Um, but if you just go into the general game chat and say, hey, can I join your FSC group and put in your Microsoft name, we'll shoot you invites. Uh, the FSC uh, name. FSC name. Why did I say whatever? Yep. Yeah, your FSC name. We'll shoot you invites and get you to the group. And we're, right now, we're based out of Oregon because most of us live in Oregon. Um, but as what I, what we're really trying to do is kind of shift things for what group members want. So right now we own one Cessna 172. We're looking at other planes that people want to fly. So if you want to fly like Cubs or I think we're looking at a one or a 62 ne a DA 62 next because everybody can fly that regardless of what version of uh, Flight Sim 2020 you have. Yeah, and that is the downside. So FSE is free, whereas on air is a subscription based. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, stargazing was something that I always wanted to do as a kid, but nobody would ever buy me a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're supposed to take magnifying glasses and just put them in a, like, paper cardboard tube. <laughs> so I never, I was, I never really got into it, unfortunately. So, uh, just a heads up, <laughs> flight related for a minute. Um, I'm 40 miles out of MLM. Once we cross MLM, safe altitude is 15,000. Yeah, I think I see the mountains for that too. They appear to be to the south. Yeah. Well, the flight safe flight altitude for the path we're on. So, um... No, that's Dude, I'm right. so dumb. Why didn't I pull... I should pull up Little Nav Map. Little Nav Map actually somehow magically knows what the minimum safe is for yeah. your path. Uh, it would actually give us that. Navigraph does too. If you look at your path, it'll where? tell you. It's right underneath the uh, vector indicator. Where it says V28, right underneath it in red. It's oh, got the, oh, oh, that's for that airway. Yeah, for the airway we're going to be on, it's gonna it's got the minimum safe, which is 15,000. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm at 14 right now. I can climb to 15. Yeah, I mean, we no don't problem. have to do it yet. We're still 40 miles out of our, our next waypoint. So it's after we transition from the next waypoint, we need yeah. to climb to 15,000. Um, so both of them, both FS economy and on air add expenses to try to model the real life economy of owning a plane. So they both add <laughs> fuel that you need to buy. Um, they both require things like the hundred hour inspection. Um, they both require engine replacements after a certain number of hours. These are all stuff that are like expected, um, maintenance on an aircraft, um, I do kind of like how Honor does it because Honor actually requires time as well. FSC, you just you pay the maintenance fee and it's fixed right away. In Honor, part of the company management is you can hire mechanics and you can actually skill them up and they increase how well they repair things and how fast. So in FSC, when you're doing like an in, sorry in Honor, when you're doing an engine swap, your plane's out of service for a while until the engine swapped out. Um, but the purpose of both of them, both of them, is to have a cost. There's also monthly um, ownership fees of the airplanes, which covers things like insurance, registration, all that stuff. Um, there's landing fee. Like it, they both really try to model overall the economy of owning a plane. You know, it's one thing to say like you, you go to Craigslist and you find some old Cub for like thirty thousand dollars. You're like, yeah, I own a plane now. But there's a lot of cost into actually owning a plane. Um, and I think any pilot that has more than like 20 hours in their logbook can probably tell you the cost per hour to operate their plane. And yeah, no, Master Ryan, we're, thanks for the follow. We're good until we cross MLM. Yeah. You set three zero one three. I'm gonna set that and see what it. My, my ATC call is 3011, so that 13 is pretty close. See, mine mine should be... 
Master Brian, are you in view of me? What is my alt what is my altimeter saying on my name tag? Is it saying fourteen thousand? It is thirteen nine seventy one. Which Mastermind is saying thirteen nine sixty two, so you both are like almost identical. And mine is thirteen six eighty. And Mastermind, are you level at fourteen thousand? Okay, then I'm fine. Then my pressure's fine. That's so weird that yours is still changing. How That's are awesome you getting... That. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's so weird. I don't think it could be my network blocking it because this PC is on the DMZ. You're on the demilitarized zone? So it uh, should be fine. That is Navigraph failures. So I added that as a screen capture. So I can turn it off. Bloop, hmm. There it's gone. Um, but that is a third party nav chart program. Here's the whole thing. And this is where we were programming our flight plan. Uh, and this is this is totally outside of flight sim. Um, I have a tie-in, so it is reading my position. But you do not have to get this. Like, <laughs> this is a hundred percent more for the realism side of flight planning. This is not required for play flight sim. Let me set the record very straight on that. Um, but and I just got this today. Um, but I have it set up. So we we planned our flights here to follow. If we do the low routes here. So air travel has highways, much like the, you know, the highway system has highways. I know, shocking, right? So there's actually like transit paths um, around, frankly, around the world. And so you can see all these like flight paths here. You can see all of them that go into Hawaii. You see the ones that go up and over. Here's the high altitude ones where you'll see all the ones that go across the Pacific or down in Australia or up over. Um, that is an interesting marking. That's, no, the, a, that's the North Atlantic tracks. Yeah. Um, so there's actually like, there's airways, there's highways. Oh, oh, please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, nice lady. Like, no, channel. What are you going to give me for an Going to 118 decimal 5 beach craft echo Oscar November. Can you tell me which approach you wanted to contact? Approach Beechcraft, nope, it's literally just approach. It's not <laughs> tune, tune approach it's on... Tune approach. Uh, please... Literally like... Oh, because, because it has no idea how to pronounce this. Already <laughs> yeah. So it, it gave me 3013 as well. Let me let me see what. Um. But anyways, like three seven. Nope, not zero. One three. Uh. uh yeah, a little less. That's a very good point. Uh, P three or on, is that there is a free version of this called Little Nav Map. Um, but I figured I'd try this out tonight to see if this was useful. So we what we tried to do when we did our flight plan today. In, in Flight Sim, by default, it'll do a GPS tracking where you go from a, take a, or from a destination to an arrival, or departure to an arrival, and it'll just do like the GPS directly to it. What we tried to do is we tried to plan our flight path, so we actually followed flight routes. Uh, so that's what this is. Yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna drop it in Mexico City. Which we still are a ways out of that. Let me transition down to low ground. So that's that's what this is, and I I did a screen capture on this, um, so that if you wanted to see kind of what our path is, you got the little inset up at the top. And I if it's distracting, I could totally turn it off. 
Flight uh, following gave me standard standard pressure from approach. I don't I don't I don't know. I think it should kind of be done with that one. Um, failures. It's the same subscription. So you, if you have a subscription to to Navigraph, it's not dependent on your flight sim. You should actually be able to go into Navigraph and actually with with flight sim 2020, you don't need any additional link. It, it automatically links through Sim Connect. So you don't need to do um, I, I will. I will make a statement okay. about this though. Navigraph is okay. Yeah. If if you're planning on using airliners or jets, mainly third party stuff, if you're planning on buying third party aircraft that have nav databases for their FMCs, Navigraph is great because you get the files for that with the subscription. I will say that I'm not too happy with this app. It it is a it feels like a very bad mobile port that doesn't work very well on in the PC environment. So if you are okay with paying a yearly subscription and saving a little bit of money, I would go with ForeFlight, which is an actual electronic flight bag program for pilots. And it has a much better interface from what I've seen. Uh, and it's a little bit cheaper. Unfortunately, it's an annual only subscription. Yeah. They don't have a monthly that I can see. And, uh, and it also won't connect with uh, Flight Sim. And right now, I don't think. for me, I'm on, I'm trying the monthly for Navigraph to see if I like it. Yeah. Uh, there's another shadow. Are you are you shadowing my plane again? I probably got ahead, yeah. It does connect with flight sim. Okay, I, I wasn't so sure. So we're about eight miles out from the waypoint, and after that waypoint, we should start climbing. Oh. If um. If FS Labs doesn't bring their A320 over to MSFS anytime soon, I may ditch Navigraph and go to ForeFlight if I can somehow swing an annual subscription on it. Um, just for the interface alone. Uh, Have you bought a plane? You know, you know, that one I'm not so sure about either if it's US only, because Navigraph does seem to have pretty good global coverage. No, I haven't bought. The only thing that I've purchased for add-ons is uh, the Rex weather. And the only reason I really jumped the jumped on that one was because it was one that I didn't pick up for FSX, and it kind of limited me, limited me down the road uh, on some of my add-on aircraft. Oh, did it? And Squirrel mainly flies out of the UK, right? Uh, Squirrel doesn't use for flight. He uses something else. He uses something similar to Four Flight for the UK. I was watching his video a few weeks ago, and he, he was talking about it. And I don't remember what it was that he uses, but I don't think it, I don't think it was Four Flight. It was something else. So spot, <clears throat> I <clears throat> sorry in FSE, and this is all like digital own. But in FSE, I own a G58, which is this plane right here. Um, in Flight Sim, though, this plane comes with an, is included in an upgraded package. So Flight Sim has three, um, basically, packages. Yep. There's standard, deluxe, and premium. This is a deluxe plane. I have premium, which includes all the deluxe as well. I think I'm the only one in our group that has anything above standard, because <coughs> protected. Uh, uh, real quick, real quick. It's time to climb to fifteen. Yeah, I thought it was passing. I'm seeing pe I'm seeing peaks over the horizon on <laughs> yeah, uh, synthetic too. vision. Yeah, we just passed over the thing too. Um, yeah, I'm gonna climb to fifteen. Yeah, I'm doing that as well. As a as a group, the first plane we bought was a one seven D two. Um. <clears throat> Frankly, because they're they're pretty inexpensive and they're kind of workhorses. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze again. But 
what I will say about FSE, and this is the same thing with On Air, and frankly the same thing with Flight Sim in general, or really any game. FSE and On Air are designed to supplement your gameplay. Kind of to the point earlier, other than saying I've got a huge amount of cash, there's not really a benefit to hoarding a huge amount of cash. So what that means is you don't necessarily need to chase best plane, most efficient plane, but biggest money maker, yada yada. In reality, biggest money maker is either the the uh, SNES 208 Caravan or the Beechcraft 350 uh, King Air. Those are the two quote money making planes that are in flight sim that are in FSX. However, that doesn't mean that that's what you need to get. Um, I've been having a lot of fun in on air playing with a, literally a cub, which is one passenger, and it's the same thing in FSE. It's one passenger. The 170, the Cessna 172 is a workhorse. It's very common. Um, it's an easier plane to get used to, but it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. Um, I think one of the reasons we got it is they were pretty inexpensive to start with. So like, here. Let's do some looking! Let's look at plane models that are in FSE. Okay, so... Let's start with the Cessna 172. So the 172 Skyhawk... In FSE, you can pick one up with just VFR which means it doesn't have any of your nav beacons or anything for 140,000. Um, or one that has all the bells and whistles, which is IFR, AP, and the G1000 for 160,000, which really isn't that much. Um, do you, Spot, do you have the standard FSC? Sorry, do you have standard flight sim or do you have any of the upgraded versions? You, so you have the premium one? Yeah. So I went with this plane, the Baron 58, which is what I'm currently in, and I actually financed it. Um, I found somebody who... I put 100 down and made an agreement with them to pay 70000 a month for three months. And they essentially bought the plane and leased it to me. And I paid off that additional 270. So at the time, I, I, finan I bought the plane for 370000 I put 100000 down, um, financed the other 270000 And I know it's a lot of pinky terms. Um, I paid off the remaining $270,000 balance in three weeks. <laughs> so. And um, it <laughs> seems like a money bank, yes? Are you still on course? Uh, to How did you PTJ? end up all the way over there? What do you have as your next waypoint? I have TLC. I have PTJ. Ah, uh, okay. We ended up with different paths. Okay. What's yours after that? Hey, MLM? Um, Wait, next one why after is... that. Oh. No, MLM should be my next oh, one. Oh, mine are or out should of have order. been the one that I passed. Wait, nope. Sorry. I have MLM to PTJ to MEX. Oh, see, I've got MLM, TLC, MEX. How did... Wait, who got... Who got off the, the path? I don't think it's that far off. Oh, yeah. Oh, Honestly, I like, see what happened. You're following... You're following Victor28 from Morelia. Yeah. Honestly, you're That's probably better happened. following Victor 28 if we're going to land in Mexico, because it's... Uh, <laughs> Actually, no. The funny thing is, is I'm honestly... You're going to go I almost in. would like to be behind you yeah. and then catch Victor 34 out to uh, Santa Lucia for the ILS. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is this... So what I'm on... 2-3. Goes to 34. Yeah. Like, and I would can... almost like to be on that out to Santa Lucia to catch uh, the ILS for... T3 left. Yeah. Which I might do that as well. 
because we can change. Yeah, if I were you, I would just I would just follow Victor Thirty Four, or actually, once you get to um, once you get to that next point, because you can just I would just direct to S direct to Santa Lucia. Yeah, which is can we just do that? SLM. Yeah, and then catch the ILSN because ILS is on the east side. These like mountains here. ILS is yeah. like right here. Actually, you can see where it has ILS. Right well, there. two three is on the other side of these. It's on the other. There's like Are a hill in the middle of Let's Mexico City. I I think with the wind two three is going to be better. But I don't know what the ground wind is looking like. Can I get the airport, please? Thank you. So you thinking two three? I'm thinking two three. But you were kind of like in zero five for the uh, mountain being uh, yeah. right there. Beechcraft Echo Oscar November contact Mexico Center on ONE two five decimal one. Once again, head down in the cockpit while I'm trying to show off scenery. One two five decimal one Beechcraft Echo Oscar November. Mexico Center Beechcraft November 4 to Echo Oscar November 15,200 feet. Beechcraft November 4 to uh, Echo Oscar November 14. Mexico Center. Continue to Papa Tango Juliet as planned. Altimeter tree zero decimal one four. What aircraft and what AP settings, Spotch? Are you thinking? That's I want this. And the one seventy two. Uh you don't want to be too aggressive climbing at four hundred feet and you had issues, really. On the one seventy two? Uh what altitude? Because the one seventy two you have to lean it. Yeah, but this thing, the flight director is driving it that high. Is driving it high. Wait. Are you also doing this in FS... Or no, you not... You were asking about FSE or... Because FSE tends to load that thing up a bit. Yeah. And cause it... And cause weight and balance issues. Yeah, Shardy, what I've really noticed is around, like, on... On the 172, I really need to pay attention. Um, sorry, I'm totally late. Yeah, Spots, that's... It. I, I've noticed that a lot of people have been complaining about certain aspects of the autopilot. And some of the complaints are valid. Yeah. But some of them are not because people aren't paying attention to... Like Eon asked about altitude, because that plane gets very squirrely depending on the altitude, especially on autopilot. Yeah. Um, the weight and balance of the aircraft. Uh, if if you choose flight level change mode in the sim, that feel that tends to get way too aggressive. Like if I try to use if I if I try to uh, climb this thing at 124 knots like the manual says it's comfortable with it tries to climb it like 12,000 feet per minute can I get my cursor please Thank and you. it's stupid aggressive yeah FLC works as long as you're not uh, insanely aggressive with it um, I've what I've found works for me with this plane is I'm currently using the TBM nine one of the TBM nine forty climb rates of 170 knots, and what I found is if I keep the power at 100 percent torque and I hold it at about a 2,000 foot uh, per minute climb rate, and I wait for the plane to reach 170 and then I hit the FLC button, it's very comfortable. That's a procedure that I found. But then if I'm at full power and doing over 200 knots and I need to climb, it tends to climb too quickly when I try to scroll it back to 170. 
and I've basically just been using vertical, uh, vertical speed. Yeah, vertical speed mode is probably the best, but that's where you can also end up with issues where the flight director is pitching too hard because yeah. as you change altitude, you need to decrease the climb rate. Otherwise, the flight director is going to keep trying to maintain the climb rate. And Whereas just, FLC will pitch for speed. And I should say, when I've been using um, vertical speed, that's after getting a feel of what works best in each aircraft. So, yeah. like, for example, this plane, I have found that a vertical speed of 12 to 1400 sorry actually under 10,000 feet I can do about 1500 a minute and it's just fine um, at around 10,000 I need to bring it down to about 1200 feet a minute um, in the 208 caravan 5 to 600 feet a minute at sea level and I'll tone that down once I get to about 6 to 8,000 and in the 172 same thing like 5 to 600 feet a minute <laughs> you want to go fly? Um, I will. <laughs> I will mention this. FLC mode. At least in the TVM, currently has a bug. When it approaches the level out, it tries to drive the vertical speed to zero. Um, I think they screwed up some of the. Somebody copy pasted some code, and it passed through review. Uh, they copied it from the vertical speed, and it's trying to read vertical speed. The vertical speed setting, even though in FLC that should be zero. I have or it's noticed, reading it as zero, I should say. I and so noticed, it slams the nose down a couple of times when it's approaching the level off. The vertical speed has been a little bit more aggressive when you first activate it. So I've had that mm -hmm. in, in the 208 as well, where I'll, like, I'll do takeoff, have vertical speed, like manually flying with a vertical speed about 500, get it, activate the um, autopilot, and it'll pitch up to do a vertical speed of like, 1200 1400 before then overcorrecting and do a negative vertical speed before it levels out at whatever i set it at. yeah yeah by the way what i just no did, it's not it's not aggro <laughs> it's not this aggro yeah. it, it's pure logic it's it's in some cases it's actually stupidly simple math that has been screwed up by the developers you know what i should have done while i was going and adding that waypoint I should have actually gotten the ILS code. Can you give me uh, the Shardies, airport, it's funny you mentioned please? PID, because I don't think there's there any go. PID. Thank you. Or the PID's definitely not implemented properly inside the autopilot here. Uh, 109.7 for 23 left um, ILS. Oh, what was that? Um, uh, sent to Lucia. Let's... Yeah, I'm coming in from such a bad angle for this. Oh, dude, why don't I just fly outbound San Mateo? Oh, there we go. That's what I need. I need to fly outbound off the San Mateo. That's yeah. what I need here. I here. just I added. Um, I just went into my flight plan after. and added uh, SLM as the waypoint after. So it'll just transition to that. Here, I'll do this, and then if I go <laughs> heading mode, and I set you to view art. To oh, this next segment yeah. for me. Ah, I need to climb higher. Oops, wrong one. This knob. Zero three nine. What is that right? <laughs> that can't be right. Uh. <laughs> Spot, there's actually... so. Oh, yes, it can. You have to... When they're installing autopilot, they actually have to calibrate it. Because <laughs> it's... You know, if you think about it, like, 
Autopilot's just a piece of software, right? But it's connected to the flight controls in your plane. And the flight controls are going to be different depending on what kind of plane you're in. And there's all, like, slightly different versions. And they're, like, every plane has its own personality. Um, like, for example, my truck doesn't start for anybody else. And it calls my wife a thief. I think it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but for me, it's just fine. It's the same thing with aircraft. They all have, like, their very own distinct personalities. So the autopilot has to be calibrated for each one of them. Um, and I remember being in a GA... It's actually a Mooney. A Mooney Bravo. Uh, when the owner had just got a new autopilot installed, and we were doing some in-flight checks to make sure that everything was calibrated correctly after doing a ground checks. Just so, you know. um, so, like, one of the things to check is to make sure that it doesn't throw the plane into unsafe banks or unsafe pitches because uh, it's actually pretty easy to lose flight control if you know, let's say you try to do a heading turn of 30 degrees to the left and it does a 90 degree high banking turn which most GA aircraft are not designed to handle you could fall out of the sky uh, which is generally bad when you're trying to fly so that stuff does have to be calibrated. Um, I do think with the last patch on Tuesday, they kind of over-aggressed the autopilot on some of the planes, which I think is also the problem with the longitude and why it's porpoising like that, is I think it's trying to overcorrect too much. Good grief. How far is San yeah, Mateo from... Yeah, so, failures, I think... Yeah. <laughs> 90 degrees is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I can't believe there haven't been enough complaints about that for them to fix that issue with the upgrade price. Yeah. I did notice that on launch, That's... too, that it was like... if you Yeah, even... that was something that was brought up. Yeah. I do think it should be like be a la carte, just whatever you, whatever the difference is, but. Yeah, it really should be. I, I don't know if it's, quote, broken or if that was intentional. At this point, it must be intentional because there's, there has to have been enough complaints. To your left. I should be off to your right. Yeah, you're off to I my right. should be off right. to your guys' right. I am way off to the left. I am on a slightly different waypoint. Yeah, I'm on a different I'm on a different uh, airway. Yeah, other way around. It goes standard, deluxe, premium. So I picked I got premium I may have pre ordered. Um Yeah, I totally pre ordered. I got premium for one twenty US. Which was double the price of standard. But I think if you bought standard and then you tried to upgrade to premium, it would have been like 150 total. Have you checked me, Tars? I'm assuming I'm clear weather <laughs> at this point. Okay. Since I'm not synced, I have I have clear. I I'm not getting. I stopped receiving weather a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. I, I've got nothing. Okay. So I'm so I'm good to land. You, I mean, you're landing ILS, so you're fine. Mm -hmm. I just noticed the bank of clouds. On yeah, the I. Range. My my ra my radar is empty. Everything is it's. I've stopped receiving weather, completely. It's there's, there's nothing. In fact, I might as well just turn off weather radar to save. CPU. Um. So. Premium Deluxe is the same thing. I think those are upgrade paths. But uh, the World Japan, that is the content DLC that they just added. It's not actually an upgrade. It's free. Um, it's just the, the upgrades to the stuff that they did to Japan. I, I don't know why they had that downloaded as a separate product. Um, but yeah, it's weird. 
there are like yeah there are three versions of the game there's standard deluxe and premium um, uh it should be mmmx M -M -M yeah so at if you bought them straight up standard was 60 then this is US dollars standard was 60 deluxe was 90 premium was 120 I think I you know I bet they did this because of the store or sorry I bet they did this because of um, game pass that's probably the upgrade cost for game pass uh I, the, I, as far as I'm aware, there's no upgrades for this. You, you buy the edition that you want, and there's no upgrade path. You're basically rebuying it, which is insane to me. Well, it's a little bit less. Because Game Pass, all Game Pass gets you is a discount to buy. Oh, there is an upgrade? Okay. Mm -hmm. You posted a screenshot. I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet because I I'm under Xbox Game Pass, and I'm actually not completely sold that this is something that I want to own right now, which is kind of an odd thing for somebody with ten thousand flight sim hours to say. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you're talking about those upgrades in the store. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, those. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so Game Pass is a 20% discount. Yes. On... Oh, it is a discount. Hey, That's Creator right. Lewis. <laughs> Alright, so here's the deal. This is totally... So... No, Mastermind, it's not the in-op buttons. So, here's how you do this. Everybody, if you don't own Flight Sim and you want to own Flight Sim, here's how you do this. Game Pass is a dollar for your first month. It's five dollars for every month after that. Sign up for Game Pass, get your first month, you get a 20% discount on every level of Flight Sim. Go and buy Flight Sim at the discounted rate, then cancel your Game Pass if you want to. You'll save money. Yeah. Uh, Creator Lewis, yes, we could. Uh, and while over on Eon's channel, we are taking re flight requests, uh, I, I think I think we kind of have an unspoken rule that personal houses are not valid for that request. I don't want to dox you. I don't want people to know where you yeah. live. Oh, we flew Sydney uh, a couple weeks flew ago. Flew Sydney for last Friday. Uh, it was a little bit before that last. Or last Wednesday? Maybe it was last Wednesday. Crap, I don't remember. We did fly Sydney. Yeah, we, we flown. We flew Sydney recently. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was last week sometime. We didn't do a whole lot of sightseeing. We basically just did, you know, <laughs> we, Opera House area. We, we did kind of the big focus. Sydney a lot more than. Yeah. All right, so I should be. Where the heck are you tracking me to? Oh, that's totally the wrong bearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I apparently put in the wrong bearing. <laughs> That'd do it. It's SL. Yeah, uh, yeah, Lewis, if you go back in our VODs, uh, we did. I, I don't, we don't have them highlighted, unfortunately. Um, I don't think, we did we did it. I don't think I'm gonna make the fifty five hundred miles to Salt Lake City. It's fine. <laughs> I was looking at the road. I was like, why did I turn so far to the left? Let's try that. Mr. Failures, I know PMDG is working on their stuff, and I have a bad feeling about PMDG, bring, bring, PMDG bringing their stuff over here. I have a feeling 
that the CPU issues, the CPU heaviness of their stuff is going to compound inside here, inside uh, Flight 7220, and they're going to flop. Well, they're not bra like they've already said they're basically going to be Q2 2021. Yeah. Yeah, I just have I just have a feeling that with as much CPU as this thing is using, I don't know I don't know if they're I don't know if their code's going to cut. I don't know if it's going to cut it. I love how sometimes I can I get this to actually activate on the flight plan, and sometimes I can't get it to edit on the flight plan. Especially since they have to uh, shift gears on programming languages for some of the stuff. See you, Spot. We'll be back here tomorrow night at 9 p.m. as well. See you, Spot. Thanks for hanging have out. Have a good night and get some sleep. Uh, See you next you, time. Like, get some extra sleep for me, too. Uh, it won't be a full redo, I don't think. Well, there is going to be a lot of rework to be done. That's why such a long delay on it. Because uh, they have to basically redo the entire uh, physics model, since this is now multi-point uh, physics instead of just a single point. Uh, the so fun fact for people who are unaware: the uh, displays you're seeing on our screens, the, the the fancy Garmin screens, and all the buttons and knobs, uh, it's all HTML and JavaScript. What's the code again? And CSS. Uh, for which one? What are you Popping them out because you can actually pop them out as. Oh, know. it's uh, right alt and click on the screen. Yeah, See? you can pop them out as a window. Um, but all the buttons and everything, all the switches are driven through JavaScript. So the PMDG team are going to have to basically learn to be web developers for every all all the. FMC stuff. Local approach Beechcraft November 4 to Echo Oscar November 16,200 feet. And that's part of why I say that it's going to flop because I don't know if they. I don't know the team very well. I know the quality is great, but I also know the C, they were very CPU heavy in FSX and P3D. So. Why? We'll see. They... Can you give me? What? Why do I have a million and a half? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd love the 737 to be just as good as it was before. Because um, I actually learned a lot about working on the real thing from the quality of their product. Um, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to buy it again. I kind of fell in love with FS Labs A320 last year or the year before, whenever that was. Um, I may, so when that one gets here, that may be my go-to. We'll see. I got real tired of fighting when flying the 737. <laughs> I honestly, dude, Mr. Flayers, I he still believe the Airbus is just a tire fire of an aircraft. Like, literally, the tires light on fire. Um, but I gotta say, from an operational standpoint, I actually enjoyed learning to fly the A320. Compared to learning to fly the 737. The 737, it just feels like a fight. It, it just... It feels like you're fighting the plane, you're fighting the systems the whole time. A320 is just, it just somehow magically seems to work. I just found At least that's what I, that's what I got from it. I found the thing that you're, I'm debating on whether I want to show you. Oh yeah? In Navigraph, because I see your mouse no, twiddling around over there. No. Oh. Oh, another bug. <laughs> is it a good one? What is it? Show it's me. Like, it's one of those things that now that I've spotted it, I can't unsee it. <laughs> oh, I guess I can see it. Oh, I guess I can see it. 
A3. I would love to have an F FS Labs quality A380. I, I would love to see them do an entire, like, full on series of Airbus aircraft at the same level. Yeah, what, there was like a freeware one. I don't think I ever flew that freeware one because it took freaking forever to download, and by the time it downloaded, I didn't care. What is this song? Is this is this a Spanish song that's playing in my ears right now? That would be ironic. Wouldn't it though? Do no. You, do you want me to show you? That sounds that sounds more Japanese. Yeah, go for it. Show me what is okay. it. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for this? One second, infinite captain. There is. Sorry, we had all this stuff so you're not distracted by this because it's not this. Are you ready? Uh-huh. See, F see yeah. the FMS knob here? Pay attention to how much white you're seeing around it. Okay. Can you see it? <laughs> Did you see it? Uh, QA! Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It's like one pixel off center. You know what? I'll call realism on that one. Just call it realism. The knob is just it's off center just a little bit in the hole. <laughs> it's, it's got just... like it's got like a bulge in the knob right here. <laughs> it's there. And I didn't notice it until I was screwing around the flight plan. It's almost like it's deformed a little bit and it's like slightly oval. Wait, why is my nav one? Mastermind has clouds too. I've got clear weather. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. You know I... what? It's a beautiful day in Mexico City for me. I <laughs> think you got a problem with your uh, thing. Oh, that's because I didn't hit the transfer. I didn't hit the transfer button. That's why. There we go. 27 miles SLM. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to wait. Actually, I should be pointed right at it. I am pointed right at it because that's the way I planned this. I planned this. Okay, so SMO should be San Mateo. Yes. Okay, so there's San Mateo. Okay. Yes. SLM. Uh, okay, Infinite Captain asked if, if you could pause the sim. Yes, you can pause the sim. If you move your mouse cursor up to the toolbar. <gasps> Eon! Not on my screen. On my screen. <laughs> kind of. Look what got fixed. Look what got fixed. Kind of. It, they decrease the button size, but they still have this weird divider. Yeah, it still has the divider, but... but they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, if you click the active pause button up here, it'll pause your sim. Now! There's a bug, but I still can't believe they haven't fixed. Your plane kind of sometimes keeps oh, flying. I did actually get... So depending on how long you stay in pause mode, be ready to catch it. Yeah. And if you're under autopilot, be ready to disconnect the autopilot and take manual control as it drives you into the ground. It tries to send you to China or whatever country is on the opposite side of the world from where you're flying. Mexico approach Beechcraft November 4 to X. Um, you can also November hit, I think you can hit the pause break button on your keyboard as well. I think I accidentally hit that earlier. Um, the other option, if you don't want to pause, is you can actually go to the camera button on the toolbar and you choose the showcase camera. Hey, yeah, mine did the same thing yours did. It went to a weird position. <clears throat> it's a feature. See, both of us have used that before we went back to it again. So it, uh, I think it was saving the previous position. Okay, how to turn autopilot Maybe. on. And I'm going to show this on the G1000, which this nav cockpit here is in like 80% of the planes in flight sim. This is the G1000, okay, which is the Garmin G1000 autopilot nav system thing. Somewhere on here, and it will depend a little bit on your plane, 
somewhere on here you will see an array of buttons that has a couple things like AP, FD, HDG, ALT, stuff like that. This plane is the Baron G58. On this plane, it's right here next to your right screen. On a lot of the Cessnas, it's on a bar up here in the top. So if you're in like, I think it's the 172 Skyhawk or the 152 Aerobat or the 208, it's up here on the, there's like a bar right here at the top that has it. Uh, you're in the TBM, right? It's on the top for you, right? Uh, TVM is top center, yes. Yeah, it's top center. Um, so common places you'll see these are up here or down here. Now, turning the autopilot on or off is literally just hitting the AP button. It turns it on or off. However, you have to tell it what to do. So there's different modes for the autopilot. Um, right now, my autopilot is on and it's in GPS mode or nav mode following a GPS and it's an altitude hold. So on here, you'll see that my nav, if I click on it, it says nav turn mode off, because for some reason on mine, they don't light up. Um, and then same thing, altitude's up here. Altitude mode says alt off. Um, normally what you would usually do is you would do an altitude hold, which if you don't set your altitude, which is a whole other thing, but what it'll do is if you're just flying and you hit autopilot on, and then you hit altitude, which will do hold mode on, it'll hold you at the altitude you're currently at. But that's your vertical speed. The other thing you typically want to do with altitude is you want it to keep you from turning too far left or right. And you can do that by either setting GPS, which is a horizontal path to follow. So for me, it's following this path right here. Or you can do HDG, which is heading, and it will fly towards this heading bug which is this little blue thing here, and you can adjust this somewhere on your screen, usually near it, you'll see a, a knob that says HDG. This you can rotate back and forth to change this heading bug, and on that HDG mode, it's gonna have you traveling at wherever you select this. So that's the bare bones of how to turn autopilot on. Um, it can get more complicated because there's things about how to control your vertical, how to control your horizontal, how to plan flight plans, stuff like that. But the base of just like, how do you turn it on? How do you keep the autopilot from crashing into the ground is that altitude hold. Oh crap, I actually had that heading set as something. <laughs> oh my God, this looks so weird compared to this chart. This is tripping me out. This chart is like rotated or something. What is the chart altitude? I am actually going to bring up. If I can pick on the airport, there we go. So approach, overlay this on top of the map. 87 is where it picks up. That turn. Is it yeah. So here is it ten thousand two hundred. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to stop at ten thousand two hundred, and then I'm giving it a rate of descent, which I'm telling it to descend at. I am not telling the computer what it can do with a lifetime supply of traffic. Um. <laughs> to send it a thousand feet a minute. And then... What is that? It's KM, yeah. Or K, that's MMMX, isn't it? It's MMX. Yeah, for the airport. Yeah. I think so. MEX is the uh, station. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to have MEX then. Because that'll give me a bearing in the airport. So now, okay. Then I can turn. Alright, uh, right, so. Oh, good. And I'm going to go through clouds. So right now I'm following uh, a heading. I'm telling it to fly at 1, 2, 3 from where I was at before. So it's going to be this direction here. Um, but I also have the GPS set up to do a direct to the beacon that's here at this airport. 
So what it's actually doing is it's showing me the bearing to the airport. And I want to know, actually I actually need it to send faster. Um, I want to know when it's at two, when it's getting really close to two, two, three, two, three, three degrees. And I also have the localizer tuned in here, which is going down the line of that runway, which here's the airport, right? Let me see if I see y'all can see this. Here's the airport here. And you see this line? This is in line with the runway. And I have the ILS, which is the instrument landing system. I have the frequency for that tuned in. And it's shooting a laser beam, basically, it's actually a frequency. But it's shooting lasers down the runway to tell me where the runway is. And then it's shooting another laser to tell me what glide slip to come in to hit the runway. Preferably wheels down, because this thing has wheels, because I'm not in a 208. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to align with that so that I can gently come in and not like slam into the side of the ground or something. Listen, listen, failures. I am not a pink line monkey follower thingy. I can go my own path. I can make my own way. Eight miles to send eleven thousand. Who did it? Who did it? Cage Rattler. Love the name. Thanks for the follow. Uh, mouse? Where did my mouse go? Thank you. Now, computer, can you show me my mouse on my other screen? Thanks. The path is for guidance. They're more like guidelines. Exactly. Because what I actually wanted to do... So the reason I did that is I wanted Par to know the parlay? bearing. No, it's just kind of... Um, I actually <laughs> just wanted to know the bearing to the airport, but I want to hit the ILS, which is the localizer here. Not that at all. I descended below the cloud level too, by the way. <laughs> Probably November. I'm on the uh, the pre-order for it. But, you know, they have to make it first. <laughs> Bastion's on the ground already. <laughs> you cut, You went direct in, didn't you? See, now it's lighting up to follow that. Um, I let's, let's slip it. So this is Mexico City, huh? This is the si the sinking city. It's pretty high up for sinking. <laughs> so this, oh, that's four miles. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, Did I'll it? Crank that no, down. no. See, I don't, I don't see anywhere. Look, I don't see anywhere in here where it gave you instructions to go directly in. do, however, see that there are flights coming in from the opposite direction. It always looks like more of a drop on the map, and it always mm. looks closer to the mountains on the maps. It, al it always looks like that. There are some areas, though, where when you head down looking at your display and you start seeing the mountains rising in front of you, you're like, eh? You sure about this? Are you, are you sure? Are you sure the chart's good? Speaking of, I should pay attention. When's my next? Uh, at 12 miles, start vectoring for ILS and 10,200. <laughs> really? Really? Was he a nervous flyer? Uh, 
Um, there are oh, three oh, lights scrolling. on the runway. Yeah, there were two inbound aircraft I saw on, on the map. Looks like you're number three. But from the opposite direction? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to go away. Uh, oh, I don't have Mexico City tuned up. That's fine. Fine, I can cheat. I can use the EFB. It might have been with older charts or something. There might have been uh, a change. Oh, 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 crossing the localizer. Uh, okay, and then at 10, we dropped to 8,700. I'm just going to drop to 8,700 now. What was that, Shadow? No Shadow. <laughs> uh, okay, I saw your Shadow. Did I get that far ahead in my procedure that I just passed underneath you? Uh, uh, I'm 5.5 on final. What the? <laughs> what wait, was that shadow? Wait, I got a shadow now. Um, there's a cloud. No, that was definitely aircraft shaped. No, I, I got the shadow too. Uh, International okay. Space Station. I'm so confused. You know, I should have geared out at this point. I, dude, I, I'm not making that phone call. I'm, I'm not reporting it. Nope. Okay. Not reporting it. Not, nope. Should I'm not doing it. Should report this? We're just gonna. We're calling it. We'll fine. We're fine. He'll, yeah, he'll I don't have stream up so I can see. It's it's okay. We're good. We're we're fine. We we're, we're okay. I don't see an issue. Can clear the right way. Table on the localizer on the approach. <laughs> uh, mastermind, just look at the runway. Yeah, there were two inbound. I'm looking So they probably don't show up on the map anymore. Directly at him. <laughs> he just touched down and needs yeah. to clear my runway real quick. I had visual I had visual on them. I also think this ILS is when I saw him on the map. Oh, it's an Airbus. <laughs> oh, oh, right. I forgot ILS approach does the herky jerky thing now. Oh yeah. That's the other bug in this plane. Hit it, when it, oh, it doesn't in mine too. Like as soon as it hits the glide slope, yeah. it's like <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that. It just caught the glide slope. <clears throat> it's still on the runway. You need to clear. I am one point. I'd be like I would be waved off so far now. I don't feel like going all the way back out to Santa Lucia, so uh, y'all better just clear the runway. So <laughs> you have weather, but no traffic. I have traffic, but no weather. <laughs> 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 have a shifted. Why did my? This is it weird? Had traffic before landing. Oh, interesting. So when you landed, you lost the traffic. Yeah, autopilot. You can keep blinking about the altitude. I'm not resetting. I'm not going around. What is? Power, power, power. More Hold power. On. I get a weird control thing going on. It felt like my yoke just. That was really weird. I yeah, or partially connected or something like. Huh. It, I don't know if you oh, saw the camera uh, shoot to third person. Hey, what was what was what was minimums on this plate? Uh, runway's clear. That was really weird. We're still below approach speed. That's all right. I'll take it. Yeah, it's like drifting to the... Also, the high-speed taxi off puts you directly on the other active. <laughs> oh, there is another runway over there. I could have just shifted over if he hadn't cleared. 
That's right. I'll disconnect autopilot at the fence line. Yep, oh, too much flare. Alright. He's fine. Well, too much power and flare. Why? Am I still. I don't have a crosswind flight sim. Oh, the shit landing. Excuse my yeah, French. No, I need to figure out. I need to go back and take a look at it. Like. Mine suddenly switched to like third. I did not. Oh, those are local. Those are those are client side. I may totally have parked in a plane on yours. Oh, also who? Guess who didn't turn on their landing lights? It's fine. Dude, we did a really bad approach there. Like that was. Dude, my landing was garbage. Okay. I got distracted by the plane, like, apparently the being shadow. kicked by some yeah. invisible crosswind. Yeah. Yeah, mine did. Did you just have that too where it, like, went really hard to the right? It didn't go hard to the right, but it drifted as I disconnected. I don't know if it was already drifted before I disconnected the autopilot. But it definitely drifted after I disconnected it, and I, I was just distracted the rest of the way down. So And it made the like... landing real garbage. Oh, plus, plus I'm trying this new viewpoint, mm. which is more in line with where the pilot's head would actually be, not this head down staring at the screens thing. Oh, yeah, so I tried to... So when that's I'm why on... the flare was a little bit rough. When I'm on Lena, I tried to do this, where it's like the screen is right at the bottom part, so I can see the airspeed and the elevation and basically yeah. the top, but I'm not like, like not the default. Uh, yeah, that's the default. What is? I feel something grinding inside my pedals. That's not cool. 